Hey gang. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's time for a special Slant Alpha adventure. And uh, I've got some interesting stuff going on right now. Let me just get a handle. I'm just jumping back downstairs into the uh, into the flight chair, so bear with me while I get my bearings and uh, then I can start cluing you in as to what's going on. Uh, in my headset right now, you can't hear it yet, but I'm going to open it up to you guys just a moment here. In my headset right now, we have something very exciting. It is the brand new, uh, still in closed beta testing, that sim audio system, and we are live on the network, not on the uh, on the front facing network, on the public network, but we're on a private subset of the that sim network where we've got the um, that sim audio system running. As a matter of fact, there was there was some good there was a good amount of chatter as the title screen was up and the music was playing, and then of course as soon as I go live, there's nothing. Up there. there we go. And that is the venerable ground point niner that you're hearing there. Um, so if you uh, want to see the flight from his po point of view, you can check in on his stream as well. You can run them in tandem, or you can switch back and forth, or whatever you'd like to do. This is... And of course, you're hearing mostly just him. You're not hearing many of the pilots respond, and I'll show you why. We're on the ground in Bismarck, North Dakota. And what does that mean for us for, for radio range? It means that we're not only able to pick up a little limited range right around us. Um, this is us right here, 514 Delta Victor. It says that I'm on 122.8, but I'm not. Um, but you can see I'm not overlapping with any of these circles except for this big circle um, around that's concentric, and that is uh, one of the transmission stations for, for Minneapolis Center. So that's uh, ground point nine that you're hearing, and all the other pilots that are in the air, we're not able to hear them right now because they're either too far away or they're too low, or I'm too most mostly because I'm too low. The higher I go, the larger my circle will get, and the more other pilots and other stations I'll be able to hear. So it's an attempt at a realistic radio range simulation, and uh, the, the problem that it causes, though, is of course he's talking to all these other pilots. When I jump in to request my clearance, I'm going to have to be cautious that he's not talking to a, a pilot that I'm not able to hear. Uh, I think that's going to cause some issues as, as pilots on the VATSIM network get used to that concept, that there are other people on the channel that uh, the controllers are talking to that they necessarily can't necessarily hear. Uh, so they're going to have to be conscious, conscious of what the controllers are saying and, and allowing space for other pilots to respond with readbacks and such, uh, even though the, the, the you, as the, as the pilot who wants to jump in, may not be able to hear that readback. You have to... Uh, you have to allow that space for it to be there. So it's going to present its, its own set of challenges, but uh, still pretty cool that we get to test it out tonight. We're going to fly from Bismarck, North Dakota, to Minneapolis, St. Paul, and then on to Green Bay, which is all within Minneapolis, is uh, Minneapolis's ARTCC coverage area. Um, and it's the Minneapolis controllers that are that are running the beta test on the on the controller side. And again, uh, Ground Point Niner is the stream that you want to pop in on if you want to see this flight from the other side. Now, because I just got home from work and had to scramble and throw all this together, you're still kind of catching me in the middle of my flight planning uh, process. So I can kind of talk through some of that with you as I do it. Um, this is my, of course, I showed you a simplified version of this flight planning page on another YouTube video a couple months ago. Uh, but this is my three-leg one now where I can uh, put in data for three legs back-to-back -back and have it do fuel planning for all three legs together. We're just going to do two legs tonight. We're going to do uh, Minneapolis, to, yeah, Bismarck up here to Minneapolis-St. Paul, and then it automatically fills in the information for uh, the first destination as the second origin, and then uh, destination for leg two is going to be Green Bay, Wisconsin. So right now, just because I like to work backwards, uh, I'm planning out the... Um, Green Bay flight. So let's go ahead into uh, Sky Vector and we'll put in uh, put in the route there. It's just the uh, Walston 7 to Green Bay. So I'll get the mileage for that. Walston 7 GRB. So that's 240.5 240.5 uh, alternate destination. Let's just go midway, and w why not? I don't know what that is? Let's blank that out and just go uh, midway to uh, KGRB. Starting at 62.7, so we'll put that in as the alternate 162.7. Uh, I don't know the headwind. Let's get on the headwind in uh, 
Active Sky. If I can find Active Sky, put in Flight Plan. K MSP to K GRB. I uh, don't know what the, we'll have to figure out what the cruise altitude is going to be. Cruise speed, I think, is uh, 380. Uh, descent and climb is 1800 feet per minute, and then 275, and then we'll just, uh, oh yeah. So what's our cruise altitude going to be? Um, it's going to be an eastbound flight, right? Let's just punch in, uh, well, let's also punch in the, um, Elevations, uh, Green Bay Airport Diagram, whoops, 695 feet, and then uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul is here, Minneapolis-St. Paul's field elevation is 842. Or is that 342? No, that's 842. So 842, and then what did I say Green Bay was? 842 and 695. So we'll go that down here. 842 and 695. And we'll say, uh, we'll just say for 27,000. Uh, probably not that high. 23,000. So it's still saying that um, my, my cruise time is only going to be 13 minutes. My climb and descent time is going to be 24 minutes. So I think we'll probably go lower. Maybe we'll go one seven thousand. There we go. Now it's, uh, now it's a little bit more even. Climb time, 17. Cruise time, 20. Descent time, 18. If you see that just to the right of where my cursor is right now. Um, that dog says hello, sir. And Al South Miami says hi there. Just joining the stream for another adventure. Yeah, we got the the brand new audio system running for tonight, and I'm planning two legs. And I've just uh, I've just caught out because I didn't get all the fuel, the flight planning done prior to starting the stream up. So the only thing I haven't put in is a push time. Oh, and the headwind. So now that we know our cruise altitude, seventeen thousand, punch that into uh, Active Sky, and it will tell me. My true air speed is going to be 380, and my ground speed is going to be 376, so that's only a four-knot headwind, so that's good. Punch that in right there. Okay, so that'll all sit for leg two, and we'll start now on the leg one. The leg one is going to be Bismarck to MSP. Let's go over here and see if there is a good route to use from Bismarck to KM. And I'm going to go through this kind of quick, because and I'm not going to explain a lot of it just because I'm just trying to get up in the air. Uh, looks like the most common route is T-Tail and then the Baney 3 arrival. So let's just go with that. Over here into uh, Sky Vector. I'll tell you what, for the alternate, let's figure out our alternate first. Um, so the, alt, the MSP. Uh, let's see, what's, uh, what's a good one south of Minneapolis-St. Paul to use as an alternate, just in case we need it? Uh, what's this one down here? K-A-L-O. So that'll be our alternate for leg one. 144 miles. Alpha 3669 exit left. Uh, taxi via Alpha Tango to the terminal ramp. This frequency. 144. Alright, so now we'll go Bismarck to MSP. And that's 335, but we're going to go with this route that we just put in. T-Tail and Baney 3, uh, which is 361.4. 361. 361.4. Uh, let's see, T tail and Baney 3, we'll punch that in there as well. Uh, origin elevation at Bismarck, let's figure that out. Airport diagram is here, and that is uh, 1,661. Uh, mileage is a little longer than the original, the second flight, so let's go 19,000 there. Uh, we can maybe go 2 1. Two three zero. Yeah, we can go a little higher, maybe two seven zero. Yeah, we'll go two seven zero on that first one. All right, come back to Active Sky K B I S to K M S P. Cruise altitude twenty seven. Everything else the same. Direct routing. Let's see. It says our okay sixteen sixty one and eight forty two is correct. 
So I got those correct. Good. Um, 380 and ground speed is going to be 378. So it's only a two knot headwind on that. Now we can fill in the, uh, the times. Uh, push time is going to be, let's call it, can I push it, uh, let's see, it's 615 now, Eastern time. Can I push it 645? Let's do it. 18, 19, 20, 21, 2245. That's going to put me on the ground, on the blocks at 16 after in terms of Zulu time. I'm quite, I don't normally do those in Eastern time. But uh, we'll do it on Zulu time tonight. It's no big deal. Um, so that'll put me on the blocks at 16 after. So we'll push at uh, 020. And uh, be on the ground at uh, 131. Hopefully. Okay, so I think that now completes everything. There's no departure procedure out of Bismarck. So the initial altitude we'll get from the controller. And everything else out there we'll get from the controller. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Uh, Pat Dog says I would love to get my hand on a setup like that. The the well, I'll tell you what the, um, the spreadsheet. Like I said, if you will look at on my YouTube channel, I've got uh, the basics on how to put that spreadsheet together. Um, it doesn't give you the three legs, but um, but that you can kind of uh, add in yourself later. But if you want to do the calculations for uh, for one leg, um, check that out. It's uh, Slant Alpha Adventures Guide to Fuel Calculation, Fuel and Time Calculation, or something like that. If you if you look on the YouTube channel, it's there. All right, now, let's get this all out of the way. Um, let's get our checklist up, the C550 checklist, and let us get started on that. All right, so I think I've already kind of synced my controls. They should all be good. And uh, the new yoke is working, works a little bit better than the uh, old one. Um, it's still it's got its own little problems, but it's consistent enough to uh, to work. Okay, there we go. Parking brake is now reset. Uh, throttles down. Flaps and spoilers are up. We are connected. We want to go through and uh, remove the static elements. We'll open up the main door. We'll open the, the baggage doors. And we'll connect the ground power unit. Uh, payload for the two legs is going to be 5,200. I'm sorry, fuel for the two legs is going to be 5,269 pounds. So I'll set it at the weight and balance. 5,269. So 53 and 3502 is as close as we're going to get. We'll have to now lower the payload weight to get the plane legal. I'm not going to be able to carry a whole lot. We'll take the people, we'll leave the suitcases. How's that? All right, we're done there. And we'll apply the changes. Ken Pryor says, hello, and better late than never had to get my outside work done first. Well, you're just catching us at the beginning, Ken. Uh, we've just barely finished the flight planning and are starting to uh, go through the pre-flight checklist. So you haven't missed a whole lot except me yammering on about my flight plan and uh, the, the VATSIM audio. Uh, this is the new, uh, new audio system, by the way. So... We'll see how it goes. It's already kind of crashed out once while I was setting up, and I had to kind of shut it all down and reconnect it. Hopefully, it'll stay stable. Let's look at the uh, that's in viewer, and right now it still says there's 36 of us connected. So, hopefully, that's the way it'll stay. Back to the uh, let's see, back to the checklist. All right, let's go ahead and get powered up. The uh, voltmeter should go to battery. A battery switch can come on. Uh, AC power can come on. Avionics can come on. Always takes a second there. Uh, nav lights are down here. I haven't flown this plane in a while. Nav lights, uh, wing lights don't really need them. Flood and panel lights don't really need them. Passenger safety lights can go into the up position. Uh, Pito and static on. Marker beacon sounds can come off. That's there. Uh, the temp control goes to manual hot or manual cold. I think it's probably good in manual cold. And we'll raise the uh, pilot's armrest so I can see the... If I can remember how. There we go. 
Okay, yep, so I can see the uh, see the center pedestal a little bit better. All right. Uh, we'll send our flight plan. We're going to get on Swift for that. It's over here. We'll get our flight plan. We're IFR. We're the C550. Our cruise out, or, yeah, cruise speed is going to be, I think, 380. Uh, we are slant Lima today. We're bucking the trend. Bucking the trend. We're slant Lima. Departing from KBiz at, uh, what did we say? So it's a six... Um, so 2255, I think, is going to be our wheels up time. Our cruise altitude, uh, what would we say for this? Uh, 27000 feet. Or no. Yeah, 270 for the first one. Uh, route is T tail and then the Bainy 3. Arrival airport is KMSP. Estimated time en route, we think, is going to be an hour 16. Fuel on board for both legs is uh, 4 hours 38 minutes. That gives us the both of the primary fuel uh, trip fuels plus the alternate reserves and contingencies. And our alternate for leg one, as I showed you before, is KALO. Last thing we do is a little same shameless self-promotion. If I could spell Twitch right, that'd be even better. Twitch tv slash slant alpha adventures and no we don't change the name of the channel to slant lima adventures when we fly with nfmc all right this flight plan has been sent ken Pryor says so the voice client is a separate program for now or do you have a pilot client with it already integrated uh, it is a separate client for the moment however swift uh, being an actively developed client does plan to integrate it once it is released. Right now, since it's still in beta and it's still changing so rapidly, they're not doing anything with it yet just because uh, it's a lot to keep up with. Uh, the other thing is I did not figure out how to get my push-to-talk map to the joystick. This client does not allow you to do it. I was trying to look for a program that would that would uh, bridge the gap between my joystick and my push-to-talk. So for right now, I've got to reach up to my keyboard and, uh, no, and 17, 13, many click apples, the uh, push-to-talk there. So, um, yep. So, so... X Squawk Box, I mean, the, the developer for X Squawk Box is still around, although he's, he kind of disappears from time to time. Um, but presumably he's still around and will update X Squawk Box. But Swift is most certainly very actively developed. And they are, are definitely, they, ha they have a prototype that works, uh, but they're just not releasing it yet because, they're make that, because the voice system is, is going through so many changes at the moment. All right, I think we're good there. I think we're sent, and we should be all set. Um, let us... Uh, Set our flight plan. We'll uh, let's fetch the ATIS. That's also done in Delta Swift. Let's get this back here. Uh, back on the ATC page. Okay, biz. And we'll fetch a METAR. Uh, 270 at 7 knots. 2.5 statute miles visibility in haze. 2984. So 2984 will set, and then wind is from the west. So we'll look at the airport diagram and see what that says for us. Uh, 2984, where do we set that? Um, okay, that's up here, 2984. And then down here on the backup as well, 2984. Field elevation at Bismarck we said was 1,661, and that's within an acceptable margin of error there, so that's good. All right. Uh, we'll set our comm ready. We're already on the right uh, comm channel, 133.4. We'll go ahead and obtain our clearance. So, uh, fingers crossed. See how this works. Minneapolis Center, Citation 514, Delta Victor's on the ground at Bismarck, IFR to Minneapolis. We have the weather. Seventeen thirteen descend via the Killer Three arrival runway three zero left transition Minneapolis altimeter two nine or seven six. I did a radio check earlier and he did hear me. American fifteen seventy eight descend via the Mitzer Three arrival runway oh, you know three what? zero left transition <laughs> Minneapolis. I used my joystick push to talk. I forgot I got to use this push to talk up here on the keyboard. <laughs> How many times am I going to do that tonight? Over under seven. 
Seven and a half. I'm going to set the over under seven and a half. We're already at one. All right, let me push my pretend push to talk and ask for that clearance again. <laughs> Speed dirt up four. Speed dirt four seven Charlie, Minneapolis, Roger. Report reaching one zero thousand. Speed dirt four seven Charlie, Rochester, altimeter T nine or eight zero. Wait for him to read that back, even though I can't hear him. Minneapolis Center, Citation 514 Delta Victor's on the ground at Bismarck with the weather IFR to Minneapolis. We're 514 Delta Victor, Minneapolis, Roger. Uh, no cruise altitude on file, say requested altitude. Uh, 270. Why that didn't send. We're 514 Delta Victor is cleared to you. Minneapolis Airport has filed to maintain 5,000. Expect flight level 270, 10 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 133.4, squawk 6301. Right, Clear to Minneapolis is filed. Maintain 5,000. Expect 270 and 10 minutes. 133.4, 6301. Citation 1, 514 Delta Victor. Station 4 Delta Victor, read back. Correct. Advise when you have the Bismarck weather. Advise ready to taxi. We have the weather. We'll call in a few for taxi 514 Delta Victor. Uh, Ken, uh, Ken Pryor, I will not be showing on VATSIM tonight, I, or on uh, VATSPY tonight, or VATTASTIC. Um, this is a, a private closed beta, so it's it's not going to be showing up on uh, either of the uh, network monitoring tools. Uh, let's see, what runway do I want at Bismarck? I ought to check. When this from the west? Um, don't need those just yet. Don't need that anymore. Uh, let's go back to uh, go back to here. Yeah, it's a closed beta test, so it's not. We're not. None of us are going to show up on uh, on any of the network monitoring tools. Uh, let's see. Airport diagram is here. Uh, November six seven five kilo Minneapolis. Go ahead. Uh, we'll go ahead and take three one for departure. And um, I believe we're up six, seven, five kilo here. I believe we're up here, so we'll uh, taxi east, south, southeast bound on Charlie to 3 uh, 1 and out. Kilo, Roger, and say altitude as well, please. Uh, you're probably below radar coverage there. I won't be able to see you below, I'd say, about 4,000 or so. So, Downwind Sim says good evening, and uh, when I have a moment, talk about the difference between the current voice system and the new beta system. I certainly will. Um, and I did okay, show you this earlier. Um, the blue circles represent transmission ranges. The, the higher you go, and here I am on the ground at Bismarck. Because I'm on the ground, I have a small circle. Uh, the higher you go, the more distant you can uh, hear. Um, so the There's radio range is being simulated. That's why you're not hearing the other pilots answer AJ, because they are out of my range, but they're within his. So that's one. That's the huge difference. Uh, and earlier... Uh, you heard me say, okay, there's a pilot reading something back. I can't jump in with my transmission. We're going to have to be way more conscious about pilots doing readbacks of instructions, even though we can't hear them, but we've got to allow space for them. Um, the other thing is, you heard the quick back and forth that AJ and I had. It's because there is no lag, no delay. As soon as you hit your push to talk, they're hearing you. I mean, there is. It's a couple of milliseconds, but it's nowhere near the transmission lag that we're used to in VATSIM. And that makes the problem of pilots stepping on each other much better better because you instantly know that someone else is also talking rather than having to wait that one to two seconds before you realize someone else keyed up at the same time you did. So it's going to be a huge leap forward for us. All right, let's uh, get back to reality here. What was I doing? Okay, I got my clearance. Let's go back to the checklist. Um, uh, let's get the transponder on. If I can remember where it is. Well, it's already on, it looks like. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, I must have left it on last time, so that's... Delta 3791, Minneapolis Center, Roger, clearance on request. On, okay, and it's in altitude mode now. And let's go ahead and get the squawk set, which was, what, 6301? American 1578, change transition, runway 35. 63, whoops. 6301. All right, and uh, we are in altitude mode, I'm pretty sure. Yep, okay. All right, in the FMC now, I want to uh, 
Yeah, there we go. I gotta remember what button does what now. Uh, in the uh, FMC, what do I want to do? Uh, when I hit that I'll flight plan, origin is KBIS. Oops. Click that twice. KMSP. Um, let's see. I've lost your mode C. Just verify uh, squawking altitude. We're gonna start uh, via direct to. Oh, and it's, yeah, let's see. Departure. Yeah, there's no uh, there's no stars, so we like to select runway three one and execute that. Number Go back to kilos, radar contact, uh, call the uh, route 45 page. South west of uh, Rochester altitude indicates five thousand five hundred. Rochester uh, altitude indicates five thousand five hundred. your destination. And then uh, we are going to do an arrival into MSP. Uh, let's see if we can figure out. Number six seven five kilo router. Which uh, landing direction they're using? I don't know. Back to Swift, and we'll go KMSP. Okay, Seven ninety-one clearance available. That is ready to copy. Two four zero at seven, so that means they're probably landing on the uh, three zeros. So we'll assume that. We'll assume a three zero left for now. Five thousand. Expect flight level two seven zero one zero minutes after departure. Departure for and it's the which arrival did I say it was? Oh, the Baney. Okay, Baney three. Oh, I'm like that. Speed radar four seven Charlie Heavy, flighting one three zero vectors left downwind. The sun to report reaching four thousand. American 1578, Minneapolis approach, 135.47, good night. Alright, now we got it. Southwest 8504, contact Minneapolis approach, 135.47, good night. Okay, Charlie, Let's check the legs page. Okay, so T-tail and then Baney, so that's going to go direct. And then the next... And then uh, it's what. So here's the dangerous thing. I always like to. Well, it does say vectors. Okay, so that's okay. The killer three arrival runway three zero left transition. So it's always kind of dangerous to get rid of those discontinuities because um, you're supposed to maintain a heading. You're not supposed to turn directly towards your uh, instrument approach until you're told to. But uh, I like to just get rid of the discontinuity. But I'm no. I know that I'm going to be in a heading mode at that point anyway. I'm not going to be letting the FMC steer my plane for me at that point. So, um, But you don't want to just delete that discontinuity and then make the FMC turn you toward the approach until your controller has told you to. So uh, it's just a personal preference on my part, but I know that I'm not going to... Uh, at that point, I'm going to be in heading mode. I'm not going to be following that magenta line anymore. So be careful about that if you choose to get rid of those discontinuities. Uh, what's the next thing? We've got our route plugged in. And uh, we've got a guess in there for our arrival runway, but uh, that is subject to change, of course. Um, we've done the legs page. What we can do is a fixed page at uh, KMSP, and we can put in a uh, we can put in a 10 mile distance, and that'll put a little circle around it for us and make it a little easier to spot. And it'll give us a reference for when we should be configuring for landing. All right, let's get back up to the front panel here. And uh, navigation distance, we're going to set with the up-down rocker in the middle here. All right, let's... Okay. There we go, so we can kind of see our navigation plan. All right. On the HSI, have you turned left heading zero four zero? I want to set the navigation source to. Oops. Oh no. Set the navigation source to GPS. 
Alright, and then also on the HSI, I'm going to set the data display to the wind vector. Alright. The initial altitude was 5,000, so we'll set that over here. thousand. The initial heading is going to be, uh, well, we don't have a departure procedure, so we're just going to assume runway heading. Runway heading off of 3-1 is what? Is uh, 3-11. Uh, well, there was the heading bug down there, okay. So there's 3-11. 4-7, Charlie, heavy descent, you report reaching 3,000. The, uh, let's see, the airspeed bug will initially be set to 155. That's our... Speedbird 47 Charlie Heavy, start looking for Rochester Airport, uh, 10 o'clock position, 1 2 mile. Our initial climb speed, yaw damper should be turned on. There we go. And, <coughs> and nav mode can also be armed. Sometimes it's easier to hit that off of here. Cleared visual approach, runway three uh, nav mode, okay, good. All right, we don't really need a pushback. There's uh, nobody behind us, so we can start up where we are. Go ahead and close the uh, baggage door and the baggage doors and the main door. We can disconnect the ground power unit. 16 Minneapolis Center, Squawk 4571. Get it. Get the uh, seatbelt light turned on because we are about to fire up here and get going. Passenger safety light, that's going to be a downward click. Heavy runway three one, clear to land. There we go, one, ding ding. Uh, gear anti-skid can come on. We'll reset the fuel consumed counter there. Beacon light can come on since we're about to uh, fire up. Uh, where's my beacon light? Oh, beacon light's down here. And uh, we will start with the uh, startup process. All right. Right side, fuel boost pump on. Ignition on. We'll engage the starter. We'll wait for the turbine to run up to about 20%. While we're waiting on that, I'm going to pull this clip out. And that will allow me to uh, pull the throttle up out of the cutoff position when it's time. There we go. Did it not go? Yeah, it didn't go. There we go. And we'll see the uh, oil pressure comes up right away. The uh, turbine temperature is going to jump up, but it should stay out of the yellow range, and then it should start to settle back down. And that means we've got a good start. Get the generator switch on. Check the right generator, make sure it's putting out power. It is. Put that back to battery. Ignition and fuel boost pump can come off. All right. Repeat the process on the left hand side. Again, I'll pull this clip. Eh, I think that was actually out already. Well, that's all right. We'll worry about that in a minute. I don't want to accidentally dump fuel. Oh, yeah, there we go. There's our 20%. All right. Oil pressure up over here. 17, 16, radar contact, three zero miles southwest of O'Neill. Turbine temperature comes up, settles in to the green range, and starts coming back down. So we are good to go. We'll kind of watch it stabilize, but once it does, we can go. Uh, generator on. We'll uh, verify that it's putting out power. It is. All right. Fuel boost and ignition comes off. All right. We'll check the warning panel. It should all be off. They are indeed. We will check our flight controls. It's where someone on the outside would confirm for us that they're all moving as as they should. But uh, there they go. Uh, wing lights were not used. Recognition lights can now come on. That's, uh, there. And 
And we'll go ahead and set flaps 7, which is right there. Okay. How are we looking? I think we're ready to go. Alright, we want a taxi to the southeast. And I think that's kind of over our right shoulder there, yep. What are we facing? Yeah, we're facing kind of north, so out there and to the right. Alright. Center Citation 514 Delta Victor's ready to taxi at Bismarck, requesting 3-1 for departure. Delta Victor 541 Delta Victor, Roger, uh, new transponder code for you, reset squawk 4276, and event initial altitude, to climb and maintain a 15,000. Okay, so, uh, squawk code was 4276. Affirm. And 15,000, 514 Delta Victor. Number 4 Delta Victor, read back correct, runway 31, taxi via Charlie, cross runway 3, at taxi via Charlie. Yeah, 3 1 via Charlie, cross 3 at Charlie, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. 4 2 7 6. Oop, there we are. 15,000. And uh, away we go. Beaver 47 Charlie, have you exit right on Alpha 8, uh, join Alpha to the terminal ramp, cross runway 20 at taxiway Alpha. Alright. No, hopefully no broken uh, taxiway lights. <laughs> Good to hear. Good to hear, he says. I wish I could have heard it. <laughs> Um, but extremely realistic, guys. There, there's going to be lots and lots of moments where you're in the, you're a pilot in the air. You're going to only be hearing one side of a conversation. So the fact that this is this new voice system models that is really awesome. I just do fe I just fear that it's going to be a training issue for vets and pilots who aren't used to that phenomenon and are going to be kind of st stepping all over each other still. Um, <laughs> but 2359 radar contact uh, seven miles northwest. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Indicates one four thousand two hundred. Maintain flight level three four zero. All right, so we're off of the ramp area onto Charlie, and we're taxiing uh, south and east on Charlie. And we were cleared to cross runway three when we get there. Alright. On our way out, Alpha, we want to do a couple things. We're going to check our brakes. We'll go ahead and throttle down here. We'll check brakes. Brakes seem to work fine. Alright, throttle back up. Get rolling again. And we also want to check the reversers. Should see six white lights in the center of the dash. One, two, and three on those each side. Okay, we're good. Handful of things to do once we get up to the uh, hold short line. So we'll get there when we get there. We got a little ways to go yet. Red Bull number one down. Red Bull number two cracked open. All right, so the over-under, if you're just joining us, over-under on the number of times I'm going to hit my joystick push-to-talk, thinking that it's my audio system push-to-talk, uh, I set it seven and a half. So far, it's happened once. And remember, we're doing two legs tonight. We're doing a two-leg flight. So, so over under seven and a half on that. Altitude, uh, climb and maintain four thousand. I don't know. I think I'm going to take the over. <laughs> 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 
to be completely honest. Alright, let me just look at the taxi by diagram. I feel like, uh... Yeah, runway 3 is all, is all the way down here, so... Good to go. Everything's... Everything's according to plan at the moment. I had said we were going to be wheels up at 6.55 Eastern Time. Might be a couple minutes early, but uh, pretty much on schedule. And don't forget, guys, um, not that I want to encourage you not to uh, watch my stream, but if you want to see and hear what's going on from the controller's point of view, the name of the stream is Ground underscore point underscore niner. One Papa, Minneapolis Center, climb and maintain flight level 310, good evening. And uh, AJ's a friend. We've uh, corresponded the numerous times over the years. Um, and I actually did get, a, get the opportunity to meet him in person. I uh, can't remember if I met him in Hartford two years ago, but I certainly met him last year at Las Vegas. I believe he was at both. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I did. I met him two years ago. But, um, but yeah. Great guy to work with. Very, very knowledgeable. I mean, he went to school for this stuff. He was going to do it professionally. Um, that didn't that career path didn't work out for him, but obviously he's very very knowledgeable about aviation and air traffic control. Practices his craft uh, to a high level of perfection, and uh, just a lot of fun to work with. All right, so here's our runway three. We were clear to cross, but I am going to check both ways before crossing the street, as a as a good boy should. My mother would be proud. Speedbird, uh, 47 Charlie, go ahead. Uh, Speedbird, 47 Charlie, have you had standby? Alright, once we get down towards the uh, hold short line, we're not quite there yet, but we do want to get the uh, TCAS on. Uh, I believe that is knob here. There we go. Get the uh, landing lights on and the anti-collision lights on. I'm going to cheat and do that now even though we're not quite there and ready to take the runway. Just get that out of the way for the for the moment. And then we will get the uh, engines into continuous ignition mode as well. Those two switches there. Thirty-seven ninety-one runway three-six fly runway heading cleared for takeoff. Wind three zero zero at nine hundred gusts one nine. All right, so our uh oh lost my uh. There we go. Uh, four seven Charlie heavy clearance available. Advisor ready to copy. Speedbird four seven Charlie heavy clear to you Minneapolis Airport uh, radar vectors to Blue M. That's uh, Bravo Lima uniform Echo Mike Blue M three arrival. Maintain eight. Uh, correction, I'm sorry, maintain 5,000, expect 8,000 five minutes after departure. Departure frequency 133.4, squawk 4567. All right, but to hold short, this is going to come hot and heavy, and hopefully I remember all the steps. I got the checklist in front of me, but it's going to be a lot to look at. I haven't done this in a while. Four seven 7 Charlie, heavy rebound, correct? So the uh, takeoff sequence here, I'm probably going to be a bit behind the airplane. Just warning you now. I'll do my best. Center citation, 4 Delta Victor Soldier, short 3-1 at Bismarck, ready to go. Five one four Delta Victor, Minneapolis Roger, runway uh, three one, flight runway heading cleared for takeoff. Wind T four zero at eight. Runway heading cleared for takeoff three one. Citation five four Delta Victor. <coughs> Our Stratman says good evening and good luck. Well, good and need it. Uh, Delta seventeen sixteen uh, new routing to Minneapolis. Advisor ready to copy. Good evening. Ready to copy Delta One. Hey, somebody we can actually hear. Seventeen sixteen, clear to you, Minneapolis Airport, present position, direct Swan. That's uh, Sierra Sierra, 
a whiskey alpha November, and then the Torgy. All the right, Arnab we're gonna Arnab. line up on three one. Have the uh, engine slightly. Uh, make sure that they respond three, normally. Uh, they uh, seem to be. So we'll go ahead and set. Uh, nope. So team sixteen, read back, correct. Set ninety-seven percent. Thirty-seven ninety-one Minneapolis red air contact. Ninety-seven is set. We're gonna rotate at one hundred knots. Seven ninety one turn right direct to you wind to join the Baney three arrival. Alright, there we go, one hundred knots. Oh, don't pitch it up too high now. Ten degrees is up all you go. Alright, gear up. Alright, and we'll pitch to uh, 155 knots now, that's that yellow. Yellow mark on the bottom of the airspeed. Get to a thousand feet, we can go flaps up. I think I'm looking at the wrong turbines, that's why I'm not getting as much power. Now we now we got ninety seven set. Center citation 514 Delta Victor is passing 3100 for 15000. Number 514 Delta Victor, Minneapolis radar contact, climb and maintain flight level 270. 270, 514 Delta Victor. Alright. So 270. Alright. Alright, so now that we're through 1000, we can, uh, we did flaps up already, we can pitch. We can throttle down to 94% RPM, and we're going to start pitching down to achieve 225. Get the uh, get the bug set there. 225. Four Delta Victor, turn right, direct T tail, join the Baney three arrival. Right, direct T tail, and join the Baney three. Five and four Delta Victor. All right. So we're going to get the nose down and pitch for that uh, two, 225. Engine ignition can go back to off. On the autopilot, we can go. Uh, hold on, let's not do that yet. Let's get the heading bug spun around. I'm not sure where T tail is, but we'll get there in a minute. Autopilot heading, altitude and altitude select, and IAS. There we go. All right, now let's figure out to direct to detail. We're still at ninety. Four percent RPM. It should pitch us for that 225. Doesn't seem to be. See what happened. It reset our it reset our selected altitude. I don't know why it did that. But we'll run that back up to uh, 270. Bartle 11 is checked in. Says glad to see you on the beta. Yeah, if I can figure out how to fly the plane, we'll be golden. <laughs> All right. So now we're climbing to 270, and the pitch at the autopilot's maintaining that uh, maintaining that speed for us. So I think we're good there. Now we just got to figure out T-tail. Let's get down here. Go legs. 
go, uh, wait a minute, nope, nope, nope. Direct. Straight up, 4 7 Charlie Heavy, runway 3 1, taxi via Alpha. To T tail, and we'll put that up here. And then we'll go back to the legs page. Okay, so now it's navigating us direct T tail, so now we can come back to the autopilot and go to uh, nav mode. Okay, I think we're good. So let's see if we can up the map range and maybe see that a little bit. 2359, go ahead. Okay, yeah, we're just not going to see that detail just yet, but that's okay. Nine, uh, landing three zero, uh, left, right, three, five, uh, it's getting us there. Three, zero, left, the approach controller will have the so, yeah, I should do a few more flights in the citation to get a little bit more comfortable with that takeoff sequence. But that wasn't too bad. I just didn't realize that when I activated the altitude select mode, it, it popped the selected altitude back to my current. I don't know why I did that. I don't know if that was user error, or if it's uh, supposed to do that, or not supposed to do that, but uh, I think we're okay now. Uh, through 5,000 feet now, we can throttle up to 100% RPMs. And as we climb, we should start to hear more of the other pilots responding. I'll check on that in just a minute. Through 10,000, we can get the landing lights off now. Oops. Is that those two? I can't see it. Yeah, landing lights one and two. 1716, I just verify it direct to Swan, waypoint uh, Sierra, Sierra, Whiskey, Alpha, November. And the recognition lights can come off as well. That's over here. Um, flight direct uh, Swan, right, well. uh, Delta 1716. 1, that should be more of about a zero, three, zero heading. Okay, I think that the audio still there. sounds a little bit too clear to me. Um, we fly hitting 030 Delta 1716. The audio still sounds a little bit too clear to me. Um, but the beautiful thing is how quick the back and forth is when they when they want to answer each other quickly. Um, Bartles has put the link up to the, uh, um, the AFE map. Yes, I do have that open, Matt. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so as I climb, you see my circle is getting larger. So... Um, so when that refreshes, you should see my, my reception range is going to start to increase. There we go. Ah, there, it just popped up, up a little bit. So my reception range will increase as I go higher up. And the higher I go, the more of the other pilots the controller's talking to will be, uh, will be audible. It'll be interesting. I'll probably watch uh, Ground Point Nine stream back later to hear some of the missing transmissions um, from... Uh, from earlier in our stream where we could not hear the other side of the conversation. It'll be interesting to watch his stream back and hear what uh, what he was hearing. The other thing we can do now is we don't need the airport diagram at Bismarck anymore. More we can start. We we'll need to pull up the pull up the uh, arrival, which is the Baney three. So we'll open there, open there. I think the uh, second page is just. Uh, Instructions as far as which transition to follow. But for right now, we just want to verify that we've got uh, T tail, then wind, and then Tig, and then Baney, and then Lucy, and then Sauger. So let's just double check again. Baney, yeah. So T tail, so it doesn't have the uh, intermediate points. Interesting, it is missing a couple points. But they're on this they're on a direct track, so it doesn't really matter that they're not there. Plus we're gonna have to uh, manage the uh, vertical navigation portion ourselves anyway. Should be fun. This is gonna be the first descent via that I'll have, I'll be doing with the citation. 
and uh, all the vertical nav stuff is kind of uh, kind of on your own. Let's go ahead and punch these points in. And then uh, T I G A G. Again, these are all in a straight line, so there's not really uh, it's not really changing the track any. But it will just help me because it'll help me make sure I'm hitting the restrictions at these points. So let's see, let's see if this works. 240 or above at wind. 200 or above. Whoops. Slash two zero zero or above at the uh, tag. And then Lucy eleven thousand and then Sauger. And then from there it might change based on uh, which runway we get. So from there I'm gonna leave it. Not gonna worry about it until we get a little closer. Really right. Heavy radar contact, uh, just All right. So for right now, that's yeah, that's that's correct. That's more correct than it was. Yeah, it's still weird to me that you're only hearing one side of many of these conversations. But something that uh, Vatsim pilots are gonna need to get used to. So I, I think that there's still going to be a problem with pilots stepping on each other. I just think it's going to be for a different reason. <laughs> well, the good news is, though, that it's working as designed. I mean, it's, it's simulating only hearing uh, the controller side of the conversation because those aircraft are supposed to be considered out of radio reception range. So it is working the way it should. I just think that there's going to be a learning curve that goes with it. Yeah, well, it's at uh, Delta 1716. Uh, uh, it's uh, flying direct as well. Uh, and yeah, and I do think that the pilot audio is... is oh, hey, there we go. That's the blocking tone. That's what happens when uh, folks transmit at the same time. And that's not a tone that's designed in. That's this, what the... What it sounds like on the receiver's end when two different stations are transmitting at the same time. That's just, that's, that tone isn't by design, it's just um, its just the way the, the physics of the radio waves work when they mix together, you get that tone. Uh, well, of course, in the sim world, th that tone had to be programmed and designed in to sound as it would realistically, but that was a neat effect to be able to, to hear that. So they refer to that as a blocking tone, and it's, like I said, it's not a tone per se, it's just the effect of of two simultaneous transmissions blending together, but that was uh, that was pretty neat to hear that. That's that's pretty realistic as to how that sounds. Ken Pryor says, I was a cop for almost 30 years and also a ham radio nut. can tell you that there's always a good chance someone will key up the mic over someone else. Yeah, so the problem we have with the current VATSIM system is that because there's a one to, there's, you know, there's anywhere from a half a second to a, a two second delay um, on the receiver's end as the, as the the buffering happens on your end and sends over the network. So when two pilots key up at the same time, it's a half second to two seconds before they realize that someone else is talking. Whereas at least here, you should hear someone key up right away. So you have that instant, almost instant, it's not really instant, but it's close, close to instant clue that someone else is keyed up. So it should take less time for, you, for two pilots to react and realize that they're talking over each other. Um, so that the problem of stepping on one another should be reduced, um, but the, but again, there's going to be the issue of stepping on pilots that are that are out of range, and uh, and yeah, Ken, and I'm I've been in transportation for uh, for almost as many years as that, and uh, I was also a police dispatcher uh, for three years here in Baltimore County, so I I've, I've worked with radio communications most of my adult life, and so I definitely agree with you. There's always going to be that etiquette issue of, of accidentally jumping in, um, but but the current voice system exacerbates that because there's that 
that up to two seconds of delay before you realize someone else has started speaking. So on this system, I think it's going to be a lot better. Of course, I'm sure you have it here under. Uh, probably invalidate mode C then at that stage. I'll show reported out to the 8000s. Uh, after Bloom, he sent via the Bloom 3 arrival, runway 35 transition, Minneapolis altimeter 2976. Yeah, I do think though, and I said it a couple. Started the thought a couple times, and I've I've interrupted myself. Okay, so Minneapolis is indeed landing on the three zeros, and I think what did I put in? I think I put in three zero left, didn't I? What did I put in? Yeah, I put in three zero left. Um, so we'll see what we get when we get there. But we are landing on the three zeros, which was, which is good. I got a 50-50 shot. <laughs> yeah, but that simulated blocking tone was was pretty neat to hear. That's done. That's done very well. That's very realistic. And his radio sounded a little bit more realistic. There was a little bit of uh, hiss in the background. I wonder if that was like engine noise coming over his mic. There should be kind of, the, the more distant someone is, there should be kind of a hiss that comes along with their voice. So I think the voice is, I mean, the, the voice is super clear, but I think it's a little bit too clear um, for, uh, for realism's sake. But if anything, they probably want to err on the side a little, a little bit too clear just to make uh, learning how to do the, the voice communications easier. I think at one point in the discussion someone said, that if you wanted to add a little bit of the distortion and, and static, um, that should be done on the client side so that each user can determine how realistic they want the, the audio. Whereas those who have a little bit more trouble understanding and hearing can, uh, can eliminate that and have this nice, crisp, clear transmission and, uh, and it'll be a little easier for them to understand what's, what they're being instructed to do. And I agree with that. Let each let each user decide how much realism they want. That's what flight simulation is uh, is built on, right? Coming up on our uh, cruise altitude, we should be should be coming up on the one to go alarm or the dryer the dryer buzzer, as I like to call it. In three, two, one. <laughs> so, so far, the only issue was that my my uh, cruise altitude didn't get sent when it, with my flight plan. I think probably because I put in 27,000 feet rather than uh, FL270. We sorted that out verbally, but that was a swift issue, not a uh, that's invoice issue. Yeah, for me, uh, the biggest improvement, the biggest improvement, I mean the, the quality of the voices is, is a big improvement but for me I think the biggest improvement is the fact that the the lag, the, the, the buffering lag is eliminated in this system um, so the exchanges, especially during very busy events, should be a lot more um, a lot quicker, a lot less uh, containing a lot less empty space in them. And controllers should be able to issue commands and get readbacks right away and then move on to the next guy a lot more swiftly and be able to handle those high volume situations. So it's going to be incumbent upon the pilots. That's another training issue. Not only are VATSIM pilots going to need to understand when uh, there are other pilots reading something back that they can't hear. That's going to be training issue number one. Training issue number two is when you transmit and the controller comes back with an instruction, be ready right away to uh, to respond with that readback and, and go. Don't, don't allow that two or three second pause while you sit and process what you were just told. Just read back. Instruction, read back, instruction, read back, instruction, read back. It should be quick. 
You ever listen to, I tell you what, you want a good example of that? Listen to uh, Reagan Tower in the middle of the afternoon when they get their uh, arrivals and departures firing off in between each other. I mean, that is like super stress quick, man. They, they, uh, there's, no, there's no pause whatsoever. Instruction readback, instruction readback. It's got to be that quick. And that, that's in pilots are going to be um, slow to get up to that, uh, that cadence, I think. Oh, Justin C., uh, I've had that same issue with Swift. I didn't even see that you said that until just now. Yeah, so I, Swift tries to, I think, uh, tries to over-validate that we are at our uh, cruise altitude, by the way. So once we get up to cruise, we can go ahead and kick off the passenger safety lights. Always have trouble finding that click spot. There we are. Well, did I just put it back on? Can't, yeah, that's in the uh, position. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, you're now free to you're now free to move about the very tiny cabin. There you go. Enjoy. <laughs> we'll sit back here for a little while. Um, but uh, Minneapolis Center Delta seventeen sixteen requesting descent. Delta seventeen sixteen Roger. That was uh, issued before descent via the Torgy three arrival runway three zero left transition Minneapolis altimeter two nine or seven six. But anyway, I, I do think. Um, Thank you, we copy that, and uh, we are ready to descend. I do think those are going to be the, the two um, biggest training issues. Being, uh, being courteous to pilots, reading back things that they can't hear, and also being uh, ready to uh, jump right in with that transmission. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, where, where am I? There we are. So the staple of uh, the staple of Carinata models is the uh, is the is the visual detail, and I think this one, you know, this one delivers. I mean, that's a uh, that's a pretty good modeling job right there. You know, little folds and wrinkles in the in the leather seating and the. The slight wear of the elastic of the seat back pockets. I mean, that's that's good, good details. Chrome cup holders there. Yeah, beautifully done as always. Oh, there we go. Oh, back to what I was just saying. So I think one one thing that Swift does, I think it, it, it tries a little too hard to uh, to over validate what you're sending over the uh, over the client. Now, of, of course, there's always the problem of of uh, that's in pilots sending bad data, un, you know, unwilling, unwittingly sending bad data in their flight plans, uh, sending wrong aircraft equipment type codes, and you know what have you. So it's, you know, I, I get the idea of trying to, uh, to trying to validate that, but uh, I think it's just a little bit too tight on its on its format for cruise speed and uh, cruise altitude, and that's what's led to some of these errors where the um, the cruise altitude and the cruise speeds are not coming through when when the flight plans are being sent. So I'm assuming uh, I'm assuming that putting that in as two seven zero 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 FT rather than FL two seven zero. Is uh, is what caused that? I'm just used to on on V Pilot and in uh, X Walk Box. I was just told from the outset of uh, being on that side that you just file file that in terms of feet, and you don't have to put the units on the end. Um, so it's just it's just, just going to be getting used to uh, the you know, the the more I guess probably the more correct format for uh, for filing your crews. Are we in the wake turbulence? Is that one? <laughs> That's neat.
and a silence falls over the crowd. <laughs> oh, let's check on our progress here. 54 miles until tea tail And we have not gotten our descend via yet, but remember, when we get to that descend via, that's going to be the tricky part. I'm going to be working, I'm going to be earning my money there. Um, just remember that, that there's no automatic VNAV. There's no auto throttle and there's no automatic VNAV in this plane. So we're going to have to be hitting these uh, these altitude restrictions kind of by hand. So that, that, that should be a fun one. Definitely want to stay tuned for that. So there is a VNAV button here. But I don't believe that the, the FMC has calculated uh, a path. My understanding is that this aircraft does not do uh, automatic VNAV the way an airliner does. I could be wrong about that. If you have first-hand knowledge that I'm wrong about that, please jump in and let me know. But my my understanding is that that I'm hitting these altitude restrictions uh, kind of by hand. So, you know, that's one thing you always want to have the uh, the chart up in front of you. Uh, let's just figure it out for Minneapolis Center for three uh, zero left. On the ground, uh, we follow that track out to J J Jenny. For three zero right, if that's what we get assigned, we're following that path out to Irv. So, one four seven seven Bravo Minneapolis Center. Good afternoon. Clear to Fargo Airport as filed to maintain one. Oh, I'm sorry, correction. Say request the cruise altitude. They don't have anything on file here for it. So we're good oh, here. We're five thousand oh. uh, November one four seven seven Bravo. That aircraft didn't have a cruise altitude file either, so that might be a VAT sim. Data server thing, maybe not, maybe not my error. Of course, this is now looking rather pornographic. So, children, shield your eyes. Um, that path is is good. We're not sure whether we're actually going to be flying this one or this one. But yeah, don't look at that. That's. Uh, that's naughty. Delta 1716, contact Minneapolis approach 135.47. 135.47, uh, thanks for the uh, 35, 000, 16. Delta 2359, same for you, contact Minneapolis approach 135.47. 135.475, Delta uh, will tell you, these two Red Bulls are ready to come out, so I'm going to see if I can step away for just a minute. And uh, I will be right back. Let me uh, talk to the controller, make sure that he knows that I'm requesting that. So hopefully he's not about to hand me off to somebody. Center Citation 514 Delta Victor requesting permission to step away for about three minutes. Therefore, Delta Victor, after approved as requested, advised by company. What you didn't hear is that I acknowledge that with two clicks of the mic. So I wonder if that'll come through on his end. All right, I'll be right back, guys.
and set our November 1477 Bravo at the FBO with the weather. Request taxi ready from Charlie 4 if you can accommodate. Mark Thompson on Bravo K Roger, uh, runway 31, taxi via Alpha, cross runway uh, 3 at uh, taxiway Alpha. Any chance of shortened from intersection Charlie 4 uh, for uh, 77 then Bravo? Mark Thompson on Bravo, that's approved as well. Uh, runway 31, taxi via Charlie, uh, correction, I'm sorry, Alpha, Charlie 4, I believe it is. Alpha, Charlie 2, Charlie 4, runway 31, thank you very much, number 1477 Bravo. And I'm sorry, correction, uh, runway 31, taxi via Charlie 4. 31, taxi via Charlie 4, November 1477, Bravo. I'm back with you. Let uh, my controller know that. Looks like we're coming up on uh, coming up on T tail. 13 miles. Yep. Getting close to the center of the nav display there. Center citation 514 Delta Victor's back with you. Land O Lakes. Yeah, if you ever wondered why the butter was called that, this is it. The butter, I guess, in some places you get Land O Lakes milk, right? Where I am, it's just the butter. Yeah, I was kind of freaked out when I went through, um, connected through Minneapolis. Well, it's, I've connected through there a couple times, and then uh, I've got uh, I've got family that lives in Minneapolis, so I went up there for a couple weddings so years ago, um, and find uh, Land Lakes chocolate milk in the uh, in the deli cases up there. Threw me off. I'd, I'd only ever thought, or I've only ever, ever known them as a butter company, but I guess they do all kinds of uh, dairy products. Um, but but over here on the east coast, the milk doesn't stay fresh enough, I guess. Number one four seven seven Bravo, ready Charlie four. Number one four seven seven Bravo, runway three one at Charlie four, cleared for takeoff. Fly runway heading one two six zero at one zero. Runway three one at Charlie four, clear takeoff. Fly runway heading November one four seven seven Bravo. Through the uh, blown through the phone, kept catching up with a couple messages, a couple work emails. There, everything's all good though. Ground speed 386 knots. Yeah, I think we'd said we'd said uh, true airspeed was going to be 380, so that's pretty close, right? Good deal. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> Now the only bad thing, go back to the 
voice fans in here. So there's not, there's not a. One four seven seven Bravo airborne at three thousand. Delivery one four seven seven Bravo radar contact maintain five thousand. Five thousand one four seven seven Bravo. There's not as good a way to see. Like what controllers are on line. Well, I guess this is a pretty comprehensive list. Uh, MSP centers listed a bunch of times because they've got a bunch of different transmit points. There is an approach controller on 35, 475, so we'll. Well, it's got me listed twice, I guess, because I got my COM 2 on 22.8, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, okay, it does show the COM 2 settings on all these people, it looks like. Interesting, okay. Uh, so Minneapolis approach on 3547. We'll go ahead and get that preset in the COM 1 standby. 3547, okay. And then remember not to hit the swap button. <laughs> there we go, 3547. Now I didn't see any ADIS stations, that's what I was really looking for. Bravo, turn right heading 090, join Victor 2 on course. 090, Victor 2 on course. Uh, oh, so it looks like it did, did turn me we'll toward... Uh, did turn me toward the next point on the Baney, and that's... Uh, Potential like that. Uh, step off frequency for about uh, five minutes or so. I'll be back with you guys shortly. All right. So it did turn me toward the next point. Wind, uh, 85 miles. Um, I would think that I should be receiving a descent via clearance here any moment now, but we're going to stay at 270 until we're told otherwise. But that's when the fun's going to begin. That's when I have to manage these uh, restrictions on my own. Uh, well, there's a JFK ATIS. Oh, there's a JFK ATIS. There's a Boston ATIS. Interesting. Uh, this is, there's, a, there's a Heathrow ATIS. <laughs> so, no MSP ATIS, although we know they're landing on the 30s. So, uh... Stick with that. TBK Heckpenner. Hecken, Hecken, Heckenpenner. You have too many letters on your call sign, sir. <laughs> Greetings from Germany, he says, the new sound, okay, that's him, is clear and good. Yes, well, that's not in production yet. This is not, uh, this is a closed private beta, so it's not yet the live that's him system. If you look on uh, that spy or Vatastic right now, you won't see me, and you won't see um, AJ Doubleday on uh, Minneapolis Center. So this is a, a, a private network, um, but it is a test of the new voice system, and we are hopeful that uh, release to the public is imminent. So yes, it's it's good. It sounds great. Um, it's uh, it's so super realistic. It's a lot of fun when you hear two pilots accidentally transmitting over each other, and you hear that tone, um, that what they call the blocking tone. Although it's 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 not really a tone. It's just the natural sound that happens when two two uh, stations, um, two, the signals from two stations blend. You get that uh, what what's perceived as a tone. Um, but that is simulated, and that sounds really, really, really realistic and neat. Um, I think the audio itself is a little bit too clear, but uh, otherwise it's, uh, it's really so good. And, and the fact that you can transmit and respond right away without that giant lag of empty space in between um, should allow the controllers to get a lot better cadence going um, when traffic is really, really busy. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm... I'm Super pleased. I, I went upstairs while uh, while I was running to the little pilot's room a minute ago, and uh, <laughs> I was like a kid in the candy shop. My wife's like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "Ah, oh, the, the voice system is so cool, so cool." I'm like, "Oh, I'm just shaking." Um, <laughs> 
So I'm pretty excited about it. It's uh, it's nifty. I'm happy to see it come after ye- literally years of discussion. Happy to see, you know, significant progress finally. So. Uh, but also, TBK, heck, can penner. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm, having, I'm struggling to, not only am I struggling to read it, it's in a really weird font on my uh, on my chat screen. I'm having trouble reading it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, thank you very much for popping in. I'm glad that you stopped in and hope that you'll uh, be back and see us. We generally do mostly, uh, mostly general aviation flying on this channel, and we do most of it with old school radio navigation methods. So we're usually flying in the Beach Baron, or the Douglas DC-3, and we're navigating all my VORs and NDBs, and uh, just uh, yeah, just your your VOR and DME gauges, mostly. Uh, every now and then I'll pop out the the citation. Every now and then I'll pop out uh, one of you know one of the airliners, one of the PNDG airliners. Um, so yeah, I like to mix it up just a little bit. Actually, we just yesterday we just flew the uh, the the P-51 Mustang, the Skunk Crafts uh, Mustang. Uh, just yesterday. So we, we do mix it up just a little bit, but it's mostly general aviation flying, mostly radio-based navigation. That's what Slant Alpha means, at least in the U.S. And, um, and we, we, yeah, we, just, it's, we try to make it educational for those who are, are wanting to, to see the radio navigation techniques done. Um, but mostly we just uh, have a lot of fun. And I make a lot of corny dad jokes. and uh, Most of them go over like uh, like lead balloons. So... So TDK says, uh, Port Delta Victor, descend via the Bainey 3 arrival, runway 30 right transition, Minneapolis Delta Victor, 2976. 2976, descend via Bainey 330 right transition, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. Uh, Heckenpetter says, I fly on IVAO. We never have ATC in the U.S. Yeah, it's a, IVAO tends to be a bit more of a uh, European centric network for the most part, not always. Um, <laughs> English people can spell my name better than the German streamers. <laughs> <laughs> I know, IVAO, I knew what you meant. Um, no worries, no worries, sir. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm primarily that sim. Um, and, uh, and like I said, I, de- I generally do uh, general aviation aircraft. Uh, let's go ahead and get the 3-0 right arrival plugged in here. Uh, so let's go departure arrivals, MSP, 3-0... Uh, we went. Uh, let's clear that and let's do three zero right and execute. And uh, just start our descent. So three zero right means we're flying that transition out to uh, Irv. Double check it in the legs page. Okay, and again, we're not really gonna. No. Remember three five six Tango Hotel, Minneapolis, Washington. All right, so let's start a descent here, and then we'll start looking at the approach. Alright, so the next firm crossing restriction we've got is we got to be at flight level 190 or below by Bainey. Uh, let's go down here to the uh, fix page. Uh, B-A-I-N-Y. Uh, we got 71 miles to Bainey. 11 minutes. 71 miles. Let's see, we got. Uh, we want to be at 15,000. Wait a minute, what are we at? 27. 15,000. So we got 12,000 feet to lose. I like to do 3.5 miles. So we're 42 miles prior to Bainey is when we'll start down. Everything before that is at or above, so we're okay. 42 miles prior to Bainey, that's when we'll start. Alright, now let's start looking at. Uh, so to Heckenpetter says, have a, have a good and quiet flight and need some sleep. 1.35 a.m. here. Uh, yeah, understood. If I tell you what, on Sundays we do a morning stream here, 8 a.m. Eastern time in the U.S., um, which would be probably uh, 
uh, probably early afternoon, right around lunchtime for you. So if you wanted to catch us live on Sundays, that'd be a good time to do it. And you can always check out our old broadcasts on YouTube as well. Um, just just uh, search for Slant Alpha Adventures with spaces, and that'll pop right up for you. But Sundays, uh, right around uh, early afternoon for you, if you ever wanted to catch us live again. All right, uh, great for you to stop in. I'm glad to uh, glad to have talked to you. All right, three zero right. Let's go ahead and get that approach in front of us and start briefing that. Uh, three zero right there. All right, so we know we're going to Irv, so we don't really need that page anymore. Uh, three zero right is uh, Sam's, and then Jacko, and then Seat Joe, and then we'll look at the missed approach and make sure that's in there properly. Uh, legs page. Sam's Jacko, and the Seat Joe's not in there, but that's okay. Uh, it says. Uh, 1300 on 301 and then to GEP to hold. Missed approach procedure says climb to 1300, then climbing right turn to GEP VO, VOR and hold. So that is correct. Looks like a fairly shallow right turn as well, just to note. Uh, 110.7 and 301, we'll go ahead and get that set. Seven and swap one ten point seven and swap. Let's just check our progress update here. Fifty three miles. Okay, so I'm still good. All right, so one ten point seven three oh one is the uh, course. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this into. Uh, Heading mode real quick. And pop that into nav mode, and now we can change the course. I can remember how. Oh, that's uh, this knob here. to uh, GPS mode there and back into nav mode. All right, so F, uh, minimums for a straight in on 30 right is 250 feet above ground level, so we'll set that here. And that's in terms of uh, radio altimeter. And we've already verified the missed approach procedure. Last thing we want to do is check our turnoff and taxi route. So let's go ahead and get our airport diagram, figure out where we're landing, or where we're uh, where we're parking rather. Uh, let's see. Airport diagram must be on the second page. So it looks like general aviation parking would be more favorable off of 30 left, but that's okay. We're not going to be picky about that. Uh, but GA parking looks like it's all down here. Uh, so from a 30 right, it's a left-hand turnoff. We're, we'll expect either Golf or Papa 8, and then around the terminal, either via Delta and across, or... Uh, depending on well, depending on routing for there, but it's definitely a left-hand turn off and then uh, straight ahead down the uh, straight ahead down the taxiway, same direction as our landing direction. So that'll be the taxi plan. Left-hand turn off being the uh, key data point right there. And I think we're done with our approach briefing. What do we say the uh, wind was? Wind and clouds. Let's. Back to the ATC page, 
and the update the Mitar 2706. So if we're landing 3-0, it's going to be a slight left to right. Again, Delta 2340 Alpha, Minneapolis. And uh, scatter to 3 zero, zero. So no, no cloud cover to speak of. Uh, Melvin Leroy, we're inbound to Minneapolis, and we're on the closed beta with the new VATS invoice system. So you won't be able to fly with us tonight, unfortunately. Um, but listen to the nice, clear, crisp voice system. And, uh, and marvel in the glory of it. <laughs> Um, so Minneapolis, and then we're going to be going on to uh, Green Bay after that. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's a private data. It's not not open uh, not open on the regular Vatsim network just yet. But I do think we probably need to be starting down for our descent. Oh my goodness, yeah, we're way late to start down on our descent. Let's get uh, let's get going. Uh, passenger safety sign. Passenger safety, yeah, there. RPM down to 70. Uh, let's get an 1800 foot per minute descent. Uh, vertical speed and descend. And let's actually do a little bit better than that. Let's do about 2065. And we're down to. Uh, yeah, we're going down to one five zero. We'll up the range just a little bit. Citation 514 Delta Victor, leaving 270 via the Baney 3. 24 Delta Victor, under. Thanks. Uh, not sure what the current ATIS information is or if that's even available. Just advise when you have the Minneapolis weather and uh, your choice uh, 30 left or 35. Uh, we've got the weather and uh, 30 left to be the shorter taxi for us. 24 Delta Victor, under. Uh, change transition, runway 30 left. Okay, 30 left transition, 514 Delta Victor. All right, I'll change plan again. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get the three zero left in front of us. We'll rebrief that. Delta twenty three forty passing two thousand eight hundred. 2340 Minneapolis departure radar contact climb and maintain a 17 belt. And yeah, now the pressure's on. I got to change runway. 2340. Now we're going back to that uh going back to that J Jenny transition now. Let's get this out of the way. Uh 14 miles to Baney. We got to be below 19,000. Uh which we'll uh we should be okay there. Um So, arrival we're now going to clear the 30 right and select the where is it ILS 30 left enter back to the legs uh, let's see uh, J Jenny vectors A, B, yeah, A, B, Z. All right, for right now, let's just get on the legs page and we'll go um, direct to Baney and activate. And let's just make sure, okay, we are direct to Baney still and we got to be below 19,000. So we've got uh, 1,700 feet to go in eight miles, so we should be fine there. And we're also supposed to be doing 280 knots, which is our red line speed, so we're not going to be able to do that. 2340, proceed direct to Herbeck at Herbeck, 
Herbic, resume the departure at Delta 2340. And Minneapolis Center, uh, hello, speed 9340. Okay, all right, we've just made, yeah, we're just now making the uh, crossing restriction at Bainey below 19,000. Uh, let's rebrief now the 30 left. 110.3, still 301. 110.3. A 301, okay. Uh, we've already checked the points. The missed approach is 1300 and then 3000 and 301 to Waxeb. Let's make sure that that is correct. Yep, Waxeb is correct. Uh, minimums are 200 feet, so we can ch adjust the minimums down. And what else? Horses are set, minimums are set, missed approach procedures checked, and now it's uh, still a left hand turn off. Yeah, still a left hand turn off when we get down, so. Okay, I think we're rebriefed. <coughs> Let's uh, check our next crossing restriction here. Clown 240 at Delta 340. It's going to be Lucy at 11,000. So let's set that down to 11,000. The legs page. See on the fixed page we can uh, clear that. We can delete that rather. Okay, go back to the previous. Let's go to the legs page. So Lucy, we've got five miles to Lucy. And we're supposed to be at or above 11,000, so we're st still okay, because we're up definitely above it. <laughs> Melvin Leroy is now sending us some hosting love. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Melvin Leroy, that does that mean that you also now have an active Twitch channel? Are you streaming to both YouTube and Twitch? I would be interested to know. Because you will pick up a new follower. All right, let us see. As we follow that cross, so the, the next firm cross we can, we've got to make is 8,000 at Mauer. I think we've got plenty of time to do that. Where are we coming into now here? Uh, we're 14 miles from Sauger, and then the next one is uh, GEP Gopher at 10,000, so we can now dial that down to 10,000. Melvin Leroy says, affirmative, still looking for the uh, coveted first follower. <laughs> well, you may have it by the time I touch down. Uh, um, well, may maybe not by the time I touch down, but you may have it uh, by the end of the night. And Delta 2340, request flight level 300 for cruise. Delta 300, Delta 2340. Okay, so you heard that blocking tone just for that millisecond as they overlap just slightly, which is cool. Um, let's see, so the next... Yeah, so the next tr uh, restriction is 10,250 knots at uh, Gopher. Yeah, we're to speed bad 9340. Heavy will be ready to go at Alpha 2 on reach. So we can definitely shallow that uh, descent out here. Heavy, runway 30 left, uh, lighting 300, clear for takeoff. Fly heading 300, runway 30 left, give takeoff speed by 9340. Speed 9340, have a amendment. You're heading on departure, turn to left, heading 260. Bump the throttle up, okay, maintain we'll fly that 250. Okay, we're heading 260 on departure, speed by 9340. So go for 13 miles, yeah. We're, got, we're down in plenty of time for go for. So we'll, uh... 
Okay, so that's what I'm doing wrong. I should be hitting the altitude select, not the altitude. Alright, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that block tone is pretty off. When you hear it, when you hear it for longer, um, when when two are transmitting at the same time, and you hear it, it's it's a lot more awesome. But yeah, the, just the bare clip, bare perception of a block tone right there is their their two um, as their exchange overlapped, and that's what I mean about the like the rapid fire cadence. I mean, you should be ready to start the readback as soon as they're done, and uh, and you don't get that on that same. You get used to these long gaps between the transition transmissions because of the of the of the buffering delay. But yeah, the cadence of the transmission should pick up to, to be a lot quicker once we get used to it. And again, this isn't public yet. This is uh, still a closed test, but hopefully it releases in a minute. And hopefully the next cross the pond will be, uh, will be on the new voice system. All right, so we're coming up on that 10,000. The plane should level off, but we'll make sure that it does. And we're still 10 miles early, but we're also going to make sure that we maintain 250 knots here. So we'll bump the throttle up. As we level off, really got to bump the throttle up. No auto throttle in the citation. You got to do it. Uh, pilot has to do all the hard work here. All right, once we pass Gopher, we got to drop 2,000 feet, but we got 16 miles to do it. Nope, wait a minute. Now we got 22 miles to do it, so we're, we're down to 8,000 by Mauer. So we're going to have 22 miles to do that uh, 2,000 feet. So that'll be plenty. We'll, we'll make, make a nice shallow descent. Uh, but we definitely have to hit uh, SP passing no lower than uh, 9,000 by Purple. And then we got to hit exactly 8,000 at Mauer. At Mauer, we also have to go. Down to 210 knots. Keeper 9340, heavy Minneapolis departure radar contact, climb and maintain 17,000. 17,000, speed about 9340. Alright, let's see. Let's go one through, once, once more through the phone here, clear out any messages. Nope, none, good. Get that out of the way. Range just a touch. Oh, no, all the way. Can never find the click spot until I'm right on top of it. Quick request here. Uh, I'm going to give an instruction to a different aircraft here for a turn. If you can key up and block, uh, I just want to get the, the block tone tested real quick. That's been great. Is that for anyone? I uh, got last calls for uh, Citation 4 Delta Victor, Citation 4 Delta Victor, if you can key up and block when I give an instruction here to a different aircraft, that would be great. What about the Victor, Roger. Citation 4 Delta Victor, how do you read? Oh, sorry, 4 Delta Victor, yeah, in the wrong push to talk. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Speed 9340, turn left, direct to uh, Rummel, at Rummel resume the worst key departure. We'll turn left, uh, direct, left direct, direct rumble, rumble, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Didn't hear it too well on my end, but on, uh, on ground Fort Niner stream, hopefully that sounded a little bit better. <laughs> uh, that's the second time. I didn't get time. a locking tone on that, though. 
Yeah, it sounds a little more pronounced sometimes, but there for some reason that didn't really come across great. Twenty three forty had a good the block tone. So now we're going to get down to 8,000 by Mauer, so we go ahead and get down to uh, 8,000. Oh no, we'll maintain 200 uh, SP with 9340 And we'll get the uh, vertical speed mode. And we'll get into a little descent there. We'll do about 1,000 foot per minute. And we also got to start lowering the speed to 210, I believe it is. So we'll set that target there. A mower, 800 feet and 210 knots. 8,000 8, feet. Getting used to the uh, more realistic ATC pace will be a big challenge this moment, Larry. Yes, I agree. Uh, that and the idea that you're going to be. Um, hearing the controller talk to planes that you're not going to be able to hear their responses. Those are the two big challenges I think VATSIM pilots are going to find with the new voice system. Getting used to the idea that they have to allow space for readbacks that they themselves cannot hear. But we'll see. It's definitely a, a lot more realistic. And uh, again, I think, that, I think that the voice system is a little bit too... I want to go. Dryer, dryers are done. Um, it's a, the voice is a little bit too clear, actually, but I think if we're going to err on the side of one or the other, let's err on the side of too clear for now. All right, how long before Mauer? Four miles. We're good. Yeah, and I'm still... I didn't get the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the standalone voice client does not allow for a joystick button. Um, I was trying to get a program installed that would have mapped my joystick button to the push to talk that I'm using for the voice client, but I didn't get that set up in time for the stream. Um, so I, I've, I said at the outset that the over under on how many times I was going to push the joystick push to talk, thinking it was the uh, voice system push to talk, was seven and a half, and I've hit uh, that's at least twice. I think uh, I think it's only been twice so far. Uh-oh, nope, gonna be leveling at 8,000. Yeah, we gotta get back up to 8,000. Alright, why it, uh, oh, because I didn't get it into, uh, altitude select. So let's get the, let's get a climb going. 2340 descent, pilot with discretion, maintain 8,000, Fargo L, come on, 298. to 8,000, 298, 2340. And we'll maintain that. Victor, descend that pilot with discretion, maintain 4,000. 4,000, 4,000. Alright, so 4,000. And uh, just go ahead to a gentle descent. Probably about six, 700 feet a minute is probably fine. And we're going to keep that 210 knots. Done with the Baney. I'm looking at the 30 left um, approach now. Let's get back down to that 210 knots. <clears throat> yeah, I'm really going to pull the power down now to get down to that 210, but then i got to pull it, pull it back in under. Yeah, so managing the descend via with uh, without a, an automatic VNAV was a lot of... Was <laughs> it's a lot of paying attention. So there's that 210, so we'll ease the power back in now. Okay, now we're looking good.
4 Delta Victor, turn left heading 030. 030, 4 Delta Victor. Alright, so autopilot heading mode 030. And I'm probably going to pull it down now to about 170. Getting ready to make our intercept, we can start pulling speed down. I think we'll uh, travel the descent just a touch. Station 4 Delta Victor rolling out on the 030 heading advised Minneapolis Airport in sight, 10 o'clock and 150. Uh, looking for the field, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. City in sight. Five four Delta Victor, we got field in sight. Station four Delta Victor, at your turn left heading three three zero to join the final. Clear to visual approach runway three zero left. Three three zero, clear the visual three zero left. Five and four Delta Victor. All right, I think we're going to just go ahead and uh, auto kick auto out of the uh, auto out of the cockpit. Kind of losing sight of it now. Oh, there we are. All right, let's get turns. We don't cross the localizer here. All right, what do we want to do now? Let me get to my checklist in front of me. Get a uh, flap seven set. Oops. Flap seven set. Hold on, where's the field? There's a field. Keep losing sight of it. Ah, uh, turn too far. Citation 4 Delta Victor, wind 270 at 7, runway 30 left, clear to left. Clear to left, 30 left, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. Alright. Autopilot, we'll get it into nav mode. So that'll give us our GPS indications. We're well above glide slope. Let's get it down. Down to 140 knots. Okay, we're already there. Set so flaps 20. Yeah, I'm going to miss some chat messages, guys. Just bear with me. Left 20, and I'm about to fall out of the sky, and I gotta add some power back in. <clears throat> okay, so now we're coming into. Uh, oh, yeah, we gotta get get some altitude off. Coming into the localizer. Yeah, I'm not doing a tremendous job of hand flying this. V ref is going to be 101. Yeah, way high. Might have to go around. Get the gear down. I think it's salvageable. This is not great form for the approach, but it's salvageable. V ref is going to be 101, so we'll get down there, get the rest of the flaps out. It's 
Let's approach altitude 3000. We'll get that set. <clears throat> Clyde slope's coming in back, coming back in now. We'll be okay here. It's a really craftily flown approach, guys. I apologize. Hopefully the approach in the Green Bay will go a little bit better. But there we go. Now we're on it. Get our uh, airspeed bug set to 101. There we go. So there's 106, there's our V approach. And over the numbers, we get it down to 101. So yeah, that was really crappily flown, but we got it back under control. Uh, so Melvin Leroy says, can you double click the mic to acknowledge? Yes, in fact, matter of fact, uh, when I stepped out of the cockpit earlier, uh, I did that. So if you listen to Ground Point Nino stream I'm back later, you should hear that. Delta 2340, advise when you have the Fargo weather, expect a visual approach on 36. If you have another request, please advise. We'll go and we're happy with the visual 2340. Runway 27 is available as well if you'd like that, just advise. Right, let's get the nose up just a little bit. Yeah, we'll think about it. <laughs> Five. Five. And down to the 101, so we're now we're right on that. Four. Three. We're continuing to crash. Barely even felt it. Pressures, spoilers. Make the next one. Laps and spoilers are stowed, reversers are cancelled. Make the next left. We're going to be here at Delta. Yeah, shitty approach, but uh, good landing. <laughs> Normally, that's not the way that works out. <laughs> Landing lights, oh, landing lights never came back on, so now they're off again. Recognition lights are kind of act as our taxi lights. We'll get, get that on. PD to 4,000, that was going to do 340. Yep, a couple things I forgot there. Signature via whiskey, whiskey 6, and remain your frequency, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. Alright, so, uh, we're off at Delta, so whiskey's going to be this first left. Okay. Yeah, so a couple things I forgot on the uh, on the approach. Didn't get the uh fighting two seven zero vectors. Didn't get the ignitions turned back on and then uh, didn't get the uh, landing lights back on under ten thousand. Those would be my two big misses there. Okay, in that case, uh, major heading, flighting, 360. And of course, now that we're back on the ground, you notice that uh, we're hearing a one-sided conversation again. See, so we're, we're too low to hear the uh, the aircraft that he's talking to. So once again, you know, we've, we've got to be cognizant, cognizant of that as VATSIM pilots. That... Uh, You know that we're going to be uh, potentially stepping on pilots that are that are out of our reception range. 
Uh, so where are we going? Whiskey to Whiskey Six. Base turn your discretion. Cleared visual approach runway two seven. Where are we up there? There's Whiskey Six to our right. There we are. And uh, I don't know if this is Signature over here or IKEA. But we'll park over here next to the IKEA. <laughs> it looks like an IKEA, doesn't it? <laughs> Come on. Tell me you weren't thinking the same thing. Number stone stone umbrella roger, your IFR cancellation received, maintain VFR, resume appropriate altitudes for directional flight. Alright, let's get the uh, checklist back in front of me, the one that I wasn't following during my approach. I probably should have not hand-flown that, I probably should have just let the uh, autopilot do it. Because I wanted to focus more on the uh, procedural stuff, but now I also wanted to show off my hotshot hand-flying skills, which, <laughs> which weren't very good. <laughs> Alright. Park here at Ikea, get some Swedish meatballs, and then we'll get ready for another leg here. Right. Parking brake. Recognition light come off. Wing lights weren't needed. Pitot static can come off. Get the throttles into cutoff. Let's see if I can those clamps. Whoops. There's one. Nope. Stay down. Stay down there. There we go. Alright. Throttle cut off. Beacon light can then come off. I can remember where that is. Oh, that's over here. Passenger safety lights. Okay. Y'all can get up. Get out. Go stretch, go get some meatballs. Generators will come off one and two. And we'll squawk 1200 and turn off the transponder. As Bebo 9340, we are going to be shortly ready for descent. Super 9340, roger, cross Atlantic at maintain a 16,000 Omaha altimeter. Uh, I'll have for the I'll have that for you in just a moment, Stemba. Roger, I will cross as. Stemba. Anti collision, I did not uh, turn that off. I should have already done that. We'll, call we'll cross uh, Atlantic at uh, 16,000. Go ahead and get uh, the ground the power unit. I believe the altimeter is 2986, but uh, we'll wait your calls. Be bad, 9340. Door open. Yeah, Omaha altimeter, 2985. Baggage doors. 2985, super bad, 9340, thank you. And we'll check on our weights. Oh, our, yeah, our fuel and ETA. I had said uh, 0011 to 0016. It's uh, 0014 now, so I'd say we nailed that, and let's check our fuel, 3614. Uh, flight and weight and balance, 36, oh, I was off by 3 pounds. Damn it! I was off by 3 pounds. <laughs> Gotta get better. Gotta get better, man. No, that's awesome. So the fuel and ETA, man, I, I continue to be very happy with how those are working out. <laughs> Alright, we'll continue the uh, shutdown procedure, but then we will go ahead and get ready to start our second leg. Um, you know what, actually we'll just go ahead and leave the rest of that stuff on. Alright, cool. Let's get our second leg underway then. Back up to the top of the page. And let's just roll through AC avionics, nav lights, uh, wing lights, fun Passenger safety is up. Uh, P2 and static can come back on then. I don't have this checklist optimized for two legs. So I just got to go through and figure out what uh, what I don't need to do again. Uh, let's send our second flight plan. So let's see if we can get it sent properly and swift this time. Uh, flight plan... 
will be this time from KMSP. Our departure time is going to be, we think, 0030. Cruise altitude 17,000. We're going to be on the WOSTN 7 and uh, then direct Green Bay. Speedbird uh, 9340 heavy advised when you have the Omaha weather, expect a visual approach from my 3 2 left. If you have another request, please advise. Estimated time and route is going to be 056. Uh, yeah, we've just got the weather and we're getting some pretty um, bright paintings. On our, Fuel um, remaining is going to be uh, uh, 311 at this point. Moment, so we're probably going to be playing some uh, and alternate some dodgems in a bit, uh, but we'll call you momentarily. Is midway. Speedbird 9340 heavy, Red. The rest of that looks good. So hopefully that's set, and hopefully the cruise altitude came across this time. We shall see in just a moment, I guess. Um, okay, we set the flight plan. We'll uh, refetch the METAR. Let's go ahead and do that on SWIFT as well. KMSP okay, METAR on the ATC page. And Santa's P9340. Uh, we're probably two seven zero seven still. Vectors two uh, nine or seven seven is the altimeter. Uh, for just for a uh, extended base and fire uh, 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 base. Uh, sorry, correction, extended downwind and base. Speedbird ninety three. Oh, you know what? Okay, Roger. And uh, did you want to? Did you want the visual approach or ILS approach though? Uh, we're going to stick to the ILS for now. Um, if we can go visual, I know the ceiling's quite low, 4,000. Never did so, uh, change um, that uh, to uh, thunder, see thunderstorms in the area at the moment. So uh, we'll probably check just through my checklist to, to see now. if it's in here somewhere. To uh, 9340, have you okay, Roger? Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> so I missed a few things. I missed oh, left, changing the uh, left, uh, the, left, the altimeter to standard when I crossed through 18,000, and then when I descended through 18,000, I missed it again. Uh, this time we're not going to be even hitting 18,000, so I won't have to worry about that. But, uh, yep, just a couple more things that I missed. Scoring myself on this flight, a solid C- minus at the moment. Um, okay, we set the, uh, set the altimeter. The origin elevation here is 842. We're showing 843. I think that's close enough. Com radios are set. We'll go ahead and obtain our clearance. Pre-filling in the departure frequency of 133.4 and 30 left. Um, if that changes, I'll just change those, but uh, that's what we're going with for now. Minneapolis Center, Citation 514 Delta Victor's on the ground at Minneapolis with the weather, IFR to Green Bay. November 514 Delta Victor, Minneapolis Center, clear it's on request. All righty. There you go. There you go, uh, Melvin Leary. Got another little double click there oh, for. Delta Victor, say requested altitude. One seven thousand. Station four, Delta Victor, Roger. Uh, clear to Green Bay Airport. Wellstone seven departure. Green Bay transition direct. Uh, climb via the SID. Accept to maintain seven thousand. Departure frequency one three three point four. Squawk four five four six. All right, clear to Green Bay via the Wellstone seven Green Bay. Uh, then direct. Uh, initial is 7,000 and 4546, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. Station uh, 4 Delta Victor, Roger. Read back, uh, correct. Delta 2340, Roger. Um, taxi straight ahead to the terminal ramp this frequency. Have a good day. Okay. Back to the checklist then. All right, container clearance, transponder will go back on. Oops, transponder will go back on and into altitude mode. And the code was 4546. Whoops. Alright, we'll get into the uh, FMC and our route entry. 
Uh, oh, good question. I don't know how do I clear this. Uh, never done a two-leg flight in this plane, so I don't know how to. Uh, I don't know how to clear this out. Root menu. Hmm. Don't know how to clear it out. It's the default. Uh... Well, I wonder if it'll let me do this. KMSP. That did it. <laughs> KGRB. Uh, Via. Uh, let's see. He didn't give us a departure of runway, but we're going to just assume 3 0 left for now. 3 0 left. And the uh, Walston 7. Green Bay transition. Execute. And that should be it. Uh, let's see if we can predict what we're going to get at Green Bay. What's Green Bay have? I can uh, blank this out and go uh, KMSP, KGRB. Lieber 9340 heavy to pilot's discretion maintained 4000. Walston 7 GRB. Oops. Did I not spell that right? Yeah, Al South MIA, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the departure and arrival. Yep, that's exactly what worked out. So I didn't see your message until just now, but yep. Fortunately, I got it. Thank you, sir. WLSTN7. Okay. So why didn't Sky Vector like that? Oh, what do I do? WRSTN 7 GRB. Oh, there we go. Um, Green Bay's got uh, those. What's the METAR at Green Bay? Let's look. Zero 080 zero at 12. We've got a runway 6. We're just going to assume we're going to get runway 6. Alright, so arrival, ILS 6, enter. Actually, yep, ILS 6 off of Green Bay. That's even better. Let's just make sure this is all correct then. Rotate it right. Speed we're 9340 heavy flighting, 180 vectors to final. Vectors to Sneen. Then do it, then Wilston, and then uh, Green Bay, pretty much. And then Famous. And then, uh, well, look, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and just get all this stuff in front of us. Airport diagram, then the Wilston, Walston, Wilston, Walston, tomato, tomato. FO76 Killa says, hey man, I need help. I just got the Zebra mod. Uh, can try to help you. What's, uh, what's the question? Let's see if we can, while we're doing that. So what do we want to do? Or we want to go back to Green Bay. We're just assuming for right now ILS six. Put that over here at the end. The plane won't turn on the ground. So there is an option if you go into the tablet on the left hand side. Um, 
there is an option somewhere in the aircraft configuration or aircraft setup or something like that um, where you can select whether you want the nose wheel to turn with the yaw axis or with the ailerons. Uh, normal would be yaw axis if you have some sort of rudder pedal control, but you have to select that in that uh, tablet somewhere. It's in the aircraft configuration tab somewhere. Uh, let's see, where were I? Uh, I was looking at the Walston and the ILS 6, and then we'll go ahead and get the airport diagram up. But yeah, so that the, the Zebo is set up so that you would have a separate. Uh, uh, separate. You have a mouse. Oh boy. Well, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna have a lot of fun flying the Zebo mod with a mouse. Um, but uh, but yeah, you would still want. So if you're using your mouse for um, for movement of the yoke, and uh, I guess you, I don't know if what you're using for pedals. If you're if you're using pedals at all, um, but I guess you would want to set it to turn with your ailerons because if you're if you're Using the mouse, I'm assuming the mouse is your yoke and left and right, so that's what you want to set the uh, heavy nose wheel to follow the uh, yoke movement or the, or the aileron movement. So, but best of luck. If you're going to try and fly an uh, aircraft that complex and you don't have some so kind of a joystick or some kind of a, you know, some kind of a hand control to fly with, you're going to, you have a, you're in for a difficult time. Sounds old, Roger. Advise when you want to get the Fargo Airport in sight. Uh, expect uh, right down on entry for runway 27. All right. Uh, yeah, I think it's under hardware config. Um, so let's go back to. So we got the legs. We got the. Okay, we'll go ahead and set the uh, fixed page. We'll set the KGRB. I have no idea how I'm doing on time. I'm probably going to get off a little late here. Uh, and then we'll set a 10 mile ring around that. Uh, distance 10 miles. We'll get back to the front panel. We'll set the uh, navigation display range that we want here. Speed route 9340, have you turned right heading 290, intercept runway 3T left localizer? Probably about there is fine. That's going to be close enough to see what we're doing. Uh, right, let's see, the HSI is runway already set to GPS. Left. Right, nav source is already set to GPS. Good. November 77 Bravo, I believe you called Fargo Airport inside, enter right down one runway 27, report midfield. And uh, still got the wind vector, so that's good. Initial altitude was uh, 7,000, we'll set that. Speedbird 9340, heavy, one zero miles from ponies, maintain 3,000 or above until it's down. Initial heading, let's look at the Walston 7 and see what it says to do. Basically, it looks like we're going to, uh, well, there it is on the following page. Let's get that in front of us. Looks like we're going to stay on whatever heading we're assigned until we get to 7 DME out from Minneapolis. But let's get that, uh, let's get that narrative up and make sure we're interpreting that correctly. Oh, get back. Number 7, 7, Bravo, enter right down one runway two seven. Realize I had a second page. My bad. Uh, Non-expensive flight sim controls. The best one that I recommend for a for a beginner, uh, and I flew with one of these for years and years. So it's not even from necessarily for a beginner. It's just a very inexpensive joystick, and it's called the uh, Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. And you can get one for anywhere between $25 and $20, 20 to $25 US on eBay, probably. Um, and it's got, uh, it's got a twist axis for your, um, for your rudder control. And then, uh, you know, forward, back, left, and right for your yoke. And it's got uh, a built-in throttle control and a bunch of buttons for flaps and gears and uh, view controls and stuff like that. Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. That's what I would recommend you start with. Um, and again, twenty to twenty-five dollar investment just until you get comfortable. And then, if you want to go to uh, something like a uh, something like a yoke after that, you can. But uh, a very inexpensive joystick will be definitely better than trying to fly by mouse. You, you're you're really just not going to have enough hands to do everything you need to do, and uh, and manipulate all the controls with uh, with just the mouse. 
uh, assign heading for radar vectors to uh, to the yeah to the Walston fix, seven thousand or lower. Twelve left and right. Takeoff runway is thirty left and right. Assigned headings cross MSP DME at or above three thousand five hundred. And assigned altitude. Okay. All right. So we're just going to assume runway heading for now, but we may be assigned a different heading on takeoff. Uh, runway heading on three zero left is uh, three oh one. So we'll go ahead and spin that around. There we are. And back to my checklist. Okay, initial heading is set. Airspeed should be set to 155. That's there. The all damper should be on. And it is. Everything else should be off. And we'll uh, arm nav mode as well. Actually, in this case, we'll nav heading. Arm heading mode. All right, I think we're ready to get the doors closed. Get the baggage doors closed first. And then we'll close the main door. Disconnect the ground power unit, and we'll start up the uh, engines. Starting with the right side, we get the fuel boost and the ignition and the starter. We'll wait till the turbine gets up to about 20%. We'll pull that locking clip out of the way. There's our 20%. Oil pressure comes up immediately. There it is. And the turbine temperature is going to spike, but it should stay in the green, and then it should start to settle back in. Yeah, Al South my MIA concurs with my assessment. Yeah, and yeah, you can get them cheap. And no big deal, but they're wonderful. And I only uh, got my yoke about two, two three years ago. Uh, I flew for years and years and years just using a very inexpensive joystick. All right, so now that we got uh, engine two stabilized, we'll check and make sure. Well, actually, we'll turn the generator on. Then we'll check and make sure it's putting out power. There it is. And now that we've got it stabilized, we can kill the. Uh, fuel boost pump and the ignition and we'll start the process on the number one side. There we go. While we're waiting for it to spool up, get that locking clip out of the way. Wait until that turbine hits 20%. Go ahead and put the fuel in. Oil pressure comes up right away. Turbine temperature spikes but settles. And there's the spike. And it's almost in the yellow range, but now it's starting to settle back in. All right, so with that, we can hit the generator. Whoops. Bump that to the left-hand side, make sure it's putting out power. It is. And we can turn off the boost pump and the ignition. All the warning signs are off. 77 Bravo runway 27 clear to land wind 310 at 10 gust to Oh, I don't think I put the uh, did I put the passenger safety lights on? Yeah, I should have done that before. Seatbelt signs should have been on before I started the engines. It's all right though. Uh, gear anti skid was already on. Uh, fuel consume counter. We're going to go ahead and reset that. Uh, beacon light should have come on as well. Yeah, a few things I missed here in the checklist before I started the engines. It's okay. We're caught up. There we go. Okay, now I can skip down past the engine start. Warning panel is clear. Uh, flight control check. Assuming everything still works, but we'll check them again. Alright, good, good, good. Recognition lights can come on. That's basically our taxi light down here. And we'll go ahead and set flap 7. All right. You guys ready to go fly it again? What did I say? I wanted, wanted to be off by uh, uh oh 30. Well, yeah, we're going to change that to uh oh 40 here.
All right, you guys ready to go flying? Uh, Al South says, I really like that Carinado. I was about to buy the new King Air 350, but I may switch to the S550. Yeah, I love the Citation. I love the kind of the old school business jets. Um, all right, say bye to the Ikea. We are uh, getting ready to roll here. Speedbird 9340. Speedbird 9340, have you taxied via Alpha to the ramp uh, this frequency? Have a good night. Yeah, so that quickly I was able to tell that, that I was accidentally jumping in Thanks. over to uh, center, over the center controller and stop transmitting. So it was much quicker than it is on that sim to realize that uh, two were talking at once and rectify it. That's just because there's no lag whatsoever. Center Citation 514 Delta Victor is ready to taxi. Citation 4 Delta Victor, runway 30 left, taxi via Whiskey 5 Whiskey. Whiskey 5, whiskey, whiskey to 30 left, 514 Delta Victor. Alright, away we go, guys. Lever 77 Bravo, uh, taxi via Charlie to the FBO, this frequency to uh, Fargo Jet Center. All right, so hopefully we'll not have a wingtip strike with the uh, fence there. Yeah, we're good. All right, so Whiskey 5 would be the one on the right. Okay. Nobody to our left. Nobody to our right. So seven six kill us says I still can't find it. Yeah, nose wheel axis. That's that's the one it is. Front wheels won't turn and the rudder barely moves. Um, so I, the deal is um, you're going to have to have some kind of control that controls the rudder. What do you like? Like are you are you do you have a control set to to move the rudder pedals right now? Because um, if you're going to try and do it all with like, so, so like FSX and P3D, they have this, what they call auto coordination. It doesn't coordinate the turn in an aerodynamic sense, but it does automatically link the aileron and the rudder movement. Um, but if you're trying to fly on X-Plane with, uh, With uh, with just the mouse and and uh, and don't have a way of independently moving the rudder. It's just I don't I'm not sure. I tell you what, it would never even occur to me to try and fly the Zebo mod with just a mouse. So I may just be out of loss to be able to help you, man. I hate to tell you that, but uh, but yeah, you know for. For the meager investment that a cheap joystick is, it's going to be a world of difference for you. I, I promise you. Yeah, get the get the joystick, man. It's so it's so worth it for the for the. I mean, if you can pop this, you know, the the, the 50, 60 bucks for X plane, you know, fifteen twenty bucks for a joystick, it's going to just make it so much better for you. Yeah, and like I said, in Al South MIA, it says, yeah, get the cheap joystick. Um, you don't need anything fancy. I, I have um, so I have this uh, the CH Products yoke, which even itself I only spent seventy five bucks on. But you know, here's what that looks like. You can see it uh, sitting right in front of the left hand monitor there. But even that, I only spent seventy five bucks on. I got it used, and it works perfectly. Um, but yeah, a fifteen twenty dollar joystick before I got the yoke. Fifteen twenty dollar joystick was plenty, and as long as it's got um, you know twist axis for the rudder and it's got a little built-in throttle control and some buttons that you can assign some stuff to, man, it's going to make your life so much easier. If you're a beginning sim pilot, 
but you're trying to learn it in the worst possible way doing it all by the mouse. Like, I consider myself a pretty advanced sim pilot. I even would not even want to try and do it all by mouse. <laughs> I would find that impossible. Alright, so taxi out. We want to check the uh, reversers. They work. We'll check the brakes. They work. Okay. As we uh, pull up to the hold short, we'll go ahead and get the uh, T cast turned on. I can find the quick spot to do it. There we are. Landing lights, and collision lights. And continuous ignition. And we're ready. All right, let's see if I can do this uh, takeoff sequence. The FMC is a pain in the ass for beginner like me. Yeah, start with general aviation stuff then. Start with a Beach Baron or a uh, uh, Cessna Skyhawk or you know something a little simpler. If, you, if you're just getting into aviation, jumping right into a complex airliner that's, uh, you know, that normally you'd have to have thousands of hours in the real world to fly, and you're going to jump right into that as a beginner, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a tall order. So start with something simple, general aviation, and go from there. Groundport Niners rated us with a party of 24. Awesome. Well, thank you, AJ. Are you, hopefully you're still on as our controller. <laughs> but appreciate the love, man. Um, let's, uh, if you guys want to see the... Uh, See, see from the other side of the scope, we're still in Minneapolis Center's area. Uh, I don't know if the beta has ended. i got to check and see. Are we still on? Are we still on here? Uh, we got a few people still on, so I don't know. We, we, we might be getting ready to wrap up the beta test. But, uh, but we're going to still fly the uh, leg to Green Bay anyway. Oh, the beta's... Okay, the beta's wrapped up, but uh, he's going to stick around for my flight. Awesome. All right, Al South MIS is... Uh, Recommend to start small with the Cessna 172, and uh, and uh, work our way up from there. So Richard Train, I am one of the. I don't know if you came over from uh, Ground Point Niners stream, but we're testing the new voice system for Vatsim. It's much clearer and has much less of a uh, buffering delay, so it should make flying on Vatsim a lot better for those that have been shying away from it because of voice quality issues. So. Uh, uh, Young Hoon 1982 has also hit the follow button. Awesome, Richard. Yeah, Richard trains, uh, leaping for joy with that news. Yeah, it's not uh, public yet. It's still a, a, a private closed beta test. But uh, it uh, can you fix the controllers? <laughs> well, well, uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Um, yeah, there's still a few of them out there that need fixing. Now, Ground Point Nine is not one of them. He's one of the awesome ones. Um, can I fix the controllers? No, I can't. <laughs> And Young Hoon is a subscriber now too, as well. Crown Point Niner is broken. Well, no, unfortunately, I cannot fix him. Richard Trains hit the follow button as well. Man, we got the uh, we got the follow alert and the uh, subscriber alert going off like crazy. Um, Ground Point Niner is just going to have to deal with the beeping sound while I key up and uh, get my takeoff clearance. Minneapolis Center, Citation Five One Four, Delta Victor's holding short three zero left, ready to go. Going on, Young Hoon. Good to see you, man. Thank you for stopping in. Bird 514 Delta Victor, Minneapolis, runway 30 left, cleared for takeoff, wind 270 at 7, turn right heading 360. 360, clear for takeoff, 30 left, 5 and 4 Delta Victor. Alright, get the heading bug reset to uh, due north. And let's see how well or poorly I navigate this takeoff sequence. It comes at you a little quick in this citation, but uh, we'll see. Probably should check to the right and make sure I'm not uh, in anyone's path. Presumably AJ wouldn't do that to me, but you always want to check to be sure. Alright, advancing engines. Make sure they respond normally and symmetrically. Everything appears to be normal. Temps and pressures are all good. We will set uh, takeoff power of 97%. And our master warning, I don't know why. Let's check. Lap setting is where it should be. 
Everything appears normal. Don't know why I got the master warning. Probably about to find out. Rotation at 100 knots. Away we go. Pitch up very gently. Here. Just gonna manually make that right turn up to 360. Young Hoon has gifted a subscription to Richard Train. Awesome, man. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you checking in. Hope that you'll uh, hope that you come and see us again. If we get through a thousand feet AGL, we can go ahead and get flaps up as well. And we'll start pitching for that 155 knot climb. Uh, a little more to the right. Let's see if we can get the uh, autopilot engaged. Altitude. Whoops. I don't know why it's trying to pitch me down like that. Get down to 94% on the throttle now. Lumber 514 Delta Victor, Minneapolis departure, radar contact, climb and maintain a 17,000. Departure 514 Delta Victor is passing 3,100 for 17,000. Alright, so we get that set. Seven zero. Altitude select on, autopilot on. Still trying to pitch me down. Why is it doing that? Autopilot. Autopilot. Get it all turned off. That reset to one seven thousand. Yeah, heading but uh, airspeed bunk should be set to 225 now. So let's do a little extra hand flying while we figure this stuff out. heading. Arm altitude select should be 170. Arm IAS hold. We're through 5,000 feet. We can throttle up to 100%. All damper on. Autopilot on. Uh, it may just be pitching me down to get the airspeed up. As long as it doesn't put me in a descent, I guess I'm going to let it go. Direct to S9 or S9, uh, resume the Wallstone 7 departure. Direct to S9 and uh, resume the Wallstone 7, 504 Delta Victor. Alright, let's direct there. Enter. Uh, not be nav. Uh, nav mode. Alright, so we're turning direct to uh, S9. We should be climbing at 225 knots. So I set it too high, I set it at 245. All right, I think it's all working now as it should. Let's see. Let's go through our. Let's see, through 10,000, we can get the landing lights off. It's down here. Two twenty-five autopilot IAS recognition light can come off as well. Yeah, bear with me, guys. I'm just troubleshooting the. Uh, let's go direct to S9 again. Hold on. Not sure what it's doing. All 
Alright, it should be turning me toward S9. Do I have it in nav mode? I do. Have it in GPS mode, have it in nav mode. Alright, now it's gonna... Now it's starting to come in. Alright, yeah, I apologize, guys. Um, just missing some of these chat messages while I just make sure the autopilot's doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, Grand Point Niner says a new controller is coming on to ZMP. It just got off of work. Might be a few minutes, but should be up for a bit if any beta team members were considering another flight. Yep, so I am going to fly this into uh, Green Bay. Um, regardless of whether or not we have ATC. And uh, I'll tell you what, if the beta drops off, uh, I may just switch over and finish the uh, finish the flight on the, on the live network. We can do that. So one way or another, we're going to do this flight. All righty. Sorry, I had to check on the uh, check on the phone message there. We're one to go, or at least closing the dryer. Almost done, I guess. Sorry for those of you who have been on the stream the whole time and have heard that joke already once before. But hey, I got new people on. I got to recycle the material, right? <laughs> So hopefully the autopilot's going to level us off here at our target altitude of 17,000. Looks like it is. As we get to our cruise, we can go ahead and turn off the seatbelt lights. Get that back into the up position. Nope, which way did it go? There we go. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our cruise altitude. We will be serving stale peanuts and stale beer. Keep your hands and arms inside the car at all times and enjoy your ride. So it looks like we've got uh, yeah quite a few fewer users than we had on before. Yes, yeah, so the beta test I guess wrapped up. The beta test started at uh, five Eastern time, and I guess it was supposed to go to eight, maybe nine o'clock Eastern time. So yeah, it's definitely wrapping up. Um, but uh, what you're seeing here is a, is a is a map that indicates each user that's connected to the the beta voice server, and the blue circles represent their transmission and reception range. The higher you go, the bigger that circle gets, the closer you get to the ground, the smaller that circle gets. And oh, here's the overspeed. Let's get the uh, let's, yeah, let's get the aircraft throttle back down. Back into a uh, legal speed. We'll set uh, 275 if we can. That'll be close enough there. Um, so yeah, let's go back to the... Uh, so the idea is that uh, the higher up you go, the more distantly you can transmit, the more distantly you can receive, and that's because of the line of sight to the horizon. Um, when the... Uh, going pro, going pro, yep. When, uh, when you're down near the ground, you're not going to hear aircraft uh, very far away, and when you're higher up, you can't. The problem that I've um, that I've uh, speculated on is that, like cur on the current system, the current voice system, that sim users kind of step on each other because they begin transmitting, but it's anywhere from a half a second to like two to three seconds, depending on the buffering lag, before they realize that they're transmitting at the same time as someone else. On this system, 
you can kind of detect that instantaneously if you and another pilot key up at the same time, except if the controller's talking to two pilots that are on opposite sides of the airspace and they can't hear each other, but they can both hear the controller, uh, they may not know that there's another pilot transmitting. And that happens in the real world, too. Um, just, uh, just on that sim, I think it's going to be a little bit even more of a problem because, at least in the real world, you get the um, you get the training to to uh, to understand that other pilots are going to have to do a readback when they're issued an instruction, and you allow that space for that pilot to do that readback, even if you can't hear them do it. Um, on that sim, you're you're so used to oh oh, oh the, the channel's silent, I'm just going to jump in and key up. Um, or, or, oh, and that other pilot's taking forever to do his readback. I'm just going to jump in and key up. Well, no, he's not taking forever to do his readback. He's doing it. You're just, um, you're just not hearing it. So, um, so yeah, there's definitely going to be a bit of a learning curve and a little bit of a retraining for for Vatsim pilots with this new system. So it's going to be interesting to see how how that goes. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, I am looking forward to it. I think on the whole, the the pros are going to far outweigh the cons, and. Uh, you know, especially when you got busy events and full staffing where you're not going to run into that, that problem with uh, distant pilots talking to the same controller as often um, because you're going to have uh, each separate sector staffed. Uh, but during the busy events where the approach controllers especially are trying to sequence planes into a, a, t a tight arrival stream and you just you lose that cadence because of the lag in the current VATSIM system, the, uh, the current voice system where there's just this pause before every transmission. Um, it's going to make life easier for the controllers to get those rapid fire commands. It's going to be, you know, instruction readback, instruction readback, instruction readback. So that's the other thing that that's in pilots are going to need to train themselves to key up and do that readback right away and not sit there and pause and process. Clear, clear direct Green Bay Airport, Clear Altimeter 2975, direct Green Bay 504 Delta Victor. All right, so uh, 2975. 2975, and let's get the, uh, let's see, uh, direct Green Bay modification, and that should have uh, taken care of that. Let's just double check that it did. And looking good. Let's see if I can, uh, yeah, so I can only zoom that out so far, but, uh, yeah, it seems like. Seems like it's turned just in a direction. Hopefully it's a, a good direction. <laughs> Ground point Niner says, yeah, I'm slightly concerned about that. It was always a problem on Pilot Edge, yeah. Um, yeah, on, and on Pilot Edge it was worse because you were controlling like 50 different frequencies at the same time. And uh, legitimately pilots well, were supposed to not be able to hear each other. Uh, let's think the furry co-pilots probably need to make a mad dash for the back door. So let me see if I can step away for just a second. Uh, 514 Delta Victor requesting permission to step away for about two minutes. There you go, two taps. <laughs> Alright, well, well they were running out back. I'm going to run the little pilot's room myself. Four Pineapple says, what's the new thing with the blue circles? Uh, I, I tell you what, let me run upstairs. Uh, to the little pilot's room while the furry co-pilots are in the little furry co-pilot's room. And uh, be right back with you.
Yeah, plus center five and board out the pictures back with you. All right, so 155 miles to uh, Green Bay, so we're good for a little bit. Um, back to what we were talking about, and I think Form Pineapple might have gotten his uh, his answer. So, yeah, so it's a it's a it's a closed private beta test of the new voice system for Vatsim. It's not open to just anyone as of yet, um, but the uh, the pool of beta testers is getting bigger and bigger. It's up to a couple hundred people now. Um, so, uh, when will it be open to the public? Yeah, um, that there's in, in the flight sim development world, there's always that ever-present question of when, and the answer is uh, soon. <laughs> uh, and and the, the real answer is when all the bugs are, uh, are worked out, all the bugs and kinks are worked out. So that's what the purpose of the closed beta test is for. Uh, I'm sure that uh, if you look at Ground Point Niner's stream from earlier tonight, you'll see from the controller side, you'll probably see some um, some good feedback about what uh, worked well, what needs some tweaking, things like that. Uh, there's a couple little issues with the voice server, um, you know, crashing out or the clients not connecting all the time, things like that. Little issues like that that need to be uh, just uh, uh, tweaked and, cl and cleaned up before it's ready to go public. But um, but yeah, the beta is getting bigger all the time. Uh, according to Ground Point Niner, it's about 200 or so that are that are included in the test. Um, so. Yeah, and, and the, the beta test for tonight's officially closed, but we just have a few p folks that have just volunteered to stay on for a little bit and, and work the flights that are already up there. So, yeah, there's not too many pilots connected to it now. It's nine voice clients, but you'll see uh, Minneapolis Center accounts for four of them. Uh, I account for two of them. <laughs> and then there's three ADA stations. Um, so, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, so there's some there's some little coding issues. Uh, every now and then, if you try and switch frequencies, you get uh, some error messages and stuff like that. So it's not completely ready for prime time just yet. Um, but that's exactly what the beta tests are for. So the more often we do them, the more often we expose these little bugs, and the more often the developers can uh, work to fix those and get those cleaned up. And when they feel that it's ready, it, it'll be released to the public. So that's always the answer, and uh, it's not as uh, it's not as clear cut as uh, a release date, um, especially because these are all volunteers that are that are that are putting this stuff together. They're doing it in their spare time, so um, soon, I think, is the short <laughs> to to bring the the conversation full circle. The answer the answer soon. Um, is it only tonight? So there's a series of beta tests. Uh, they did one last Wednesday, I think, and then they did one tonight. Um, I think the server's actually up and running 24/7 for the most part, unless they're uh, making updates to it. But, um, but as far as gathering a big group together to do an organized beta test, yeah, it's only at certain times. Uh, and I think there's another one planned for, um, for the weekend of Flights and Expo. So the uh, first weekend, first full weekend in June, what, what is that, 7th and 8th or 8th and 9th or something like that, uh, there should be another kind of two-day test of, uh, of the beta system. So, yeah, there's going to be a, a handful of them. Um, Form Pineapple, uh, oh, Ground Point Honor says, yeah, I managed to convince him to do the early one today, uh, mostly just coordinating with the beta team to determine when they will, and uh, FS Expo, like we said, is the next really big one that's scheduled. Uh, an email from that sim will be soliciting for signups, and uh, if you want to, yeah, you right, so this Saturday the 1st, they're going to open up slots to fly into Orlando um, on that sim, and uh, if you get a slot for that, you'll be automatically invited into the into the beta test that, that happens over FS Expo weekend. So yeah, what you're seeing, what I've realized now is what you're seeing here is four instances of Minneapolis Center. Two, three, four, and me. <laughs> Uh, Young Hooten is asking, are you going to be at Flight Sim Expo? I am indeed, yes. I am indeed. So I am going to be, um, I am the former chief flight instructor of the VATSTAR ATO. 
um, and they've asked me to, uh, to come back and help them staff the booth this year. So I'm not officially part of that team anymore, but I am, this, am next weekend. <laughs> so I'm going to be staffing that booth and talking about pilot training on the VATSIM network. Um, I'm also going to be down there as part of that USA's setup with uh, the virtual Washington DC ARTCC. I'm an S2 rated controller there, so I do uh, delivery ground and tower control at uh, mostly at Reagan and at BWI, um, and occasionally some of the minor facilities also in uh, in the DC uh, coverage zone. So that might include Raleigh Durham, and uh, so yeah, I'll definitely be down there, uh, kind of floating back and forth between that USA. And, uh, and that star, and I'll be wearing my Slant Alpha Adventures logo loud and proud on the chest. Uh, I have uh, gotten some t-shirts that have this logo on it. So if you see a fat white guy walking around with a t-shirt that's got that on it, minus the text, uh, another is about to begin. Um, but with the logo, the flying plane logo and the uh, mountains and the, the uh, Slant Alpha Adventures script writing. So if you see that, that's me. <laughs> Uh, unless one of you stole that logo and made a shirt on your own, uh, I should be the only one that's got them. I haven't uh, haven't made those publicly available, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, that'll be me if you spot uh, spot a fat white guy walking around with that on. <laughs> Ground Point Niner says I should be controlling a bit for it as well. So uh, excellent, man. Yeah, I I, I um. I'm gonna try and steal some hours on uh, Raleigh Tower. We're supposed to be doing uh, we're supposed to be doing a beta test um, for flights leaving out of Raleigh headed to Orlando uh, for the for the big beta test that day. So I'm gonna try and steal some uh, some seat time on Raleigh Tower. I gotta brush up on the departures there. I haven't worked Raleigh Tower in a while. <laughs> uh, we should probably check our progress. Um, 116 miles into Green Bay VOR. Um, when we did the METAR earlier, it seemed like it was favoring the ILS-6 approach. Let's just do an update and see if, uh, see if anything's changed. Click on that. 080 at 10 knots. So yeah, I think we're still talking about uh, landing runway 6, 10 statute miles clear, 2 9 or 7 9 -er. uh, I think we've got uh, more local altimeter right now, but what's it at? 2 9 or 7 5. So we're within a couple points there, no big deal. Um, but yeah, I think we're still talking about the ILS-6, the, um, just for, for planning purposes, intercept altitude on that is 2,400, so let's just, uh, presume we got, um, 17,000 minus 2.4 is 14.6 thousands to go. If we go three and a half miles per thousand, that's 51 miles prior that we want to start down towards Green Bay. So we've got a little ways to go yet. We're at 109 miles there. Al South MIA says, By the way, can you set up a stream for VATSIM pilot training? I've been flying for a few months. Still have to get my head around all of ATC's good stuff. But I feel a, a bit apprehensive. Uh, Al South, if, if there's a particular topic you want me to cover, I can try. What I honestly recommend is, uh, yeah, Young Hoon, I wish I, <laughs> I, wish I had a... Uh, uh, chatbot operating. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. What I need is one of y'all to step up and act and uh, volunteer to be a moderator. Set all that stuff up for me. Uh, so here, Young Hoon, here's, here's what it is. Um, if you do a, an exclamation point at a command, I am your chatbot. So I will just tell you that the meter at Green Bay was issued on the 31st at 0053 Zulu, and listing winds at 080 at 10 knots, 10 statute miles clear, temperatures 17, dew point 7, Altimeter 29er, 79er, and remark blah 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 blah. So there you go. <laughs> An aviation gamer tends to jump in here and do, uh, <laughs> you're quite welcome. Aviation gamer tends to jump in here and do exclamation point uptime, to which I'll say, oh yeah, I've been live for three hours and nine minutes. <laughs> I am your chatbot now. But anyway, yeah, no, I, don't, I don't know how to set any of that stuff up. All you, uh, all you Twitch experts, if one of you wants to jump in and, uh, you know, and, and become a moderator for my channel and, uh, and help me set all that stuff up, that's great. But honestly, you know, I'm more old school. I always do things uh, the old-fashioned way. That's why I fly the radio navigation procedures. I do everything through uh, VORs and NDBs and, uh, and DME and stuff like that, typically. Don't fly this, the, the Carinado Citation 
that often, although I do love it. It's a great little plane. Um, but, uh, oh, Ground Point Niner says I can help you with that stuff at Expo if you want. Nice. Uh, I'll definitely make a point stop. And I'm getting in very early on Friday, so, um, you know, and I know that you, you're doing some hanging out at whatever Airbnb you're going to be at. I know you've been talking about it on your stream. Um, but, yeah, if there's some time on Friday, we can hook up and, and uh, oh, you're going to be there Thursday through Monday. Nice. I'm getting in very early on Friday, um, so i got all day Friday to hang out, and then I'm leaving on, like, the last flight out on Sunday night, so... Um, anyway, yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll make some time together, man. Uh, if not to uh, mess around with Twitch stuff, you'll be at the captain's corner. Uh, if not to mess around with some Twitch stuff, then definitely do some drinking. Um, <laughs> Al South MIA to get back to the um, to get back to the question about uh, tutorial videos. What I recommend you do, honestly, is to sign up for pilot training with Vatstar.com. You know, again, I, I, I kind of I kind of feel like I'm giving them a, a self-serving plug because I was the one that uh, that kind of set, you know helped to write all the training and testing material for them. Uh, I was the, the chief flight instructor there for three and a half years, so obviously I know their program in and out. Um, I've since stepped down from that and handed that off, but uh, uh, you know, like I like I intimated earlier, it was definitely an amicable parting, and I still feel like I'm a a part of that family, and uh, I, I don't think I'm being um, I don't think I'm, I'm being, uh, what's the word, biased if I say that it's a really great program. Um, and I, I, I hope that I'm saying that as objectively as possible, not just because I believe it's great, but because we've gotten just a lot of really great feedback from the hundreds and hundreds, uh, over a thousand now that have come through and gotten ratings from us, from them, I guess I should say. Uh, is it paid? No, it is not. It is, uh, there is a, a, a premium subscription that you can, that you can enroll for. Um, but uh, that's for that gives you some optional features that just makes um, makes the booking process a little easier. But uh, it's not mandatory that you sign up for for a premium subscription, and it's uh, and, and that's a fairly new thing. They've instituted that since I left. Um, but uh, for the three and a half years that I was there, it's completely 100% free, and it's still completely 100% free. But it's got an, basically an optional donation structure to it, if you want to look at it, look at it that way. But yeah, it's absolutely free. Uh, most everything associated with that sim is absolutely 100% free. We do all this for the love of the hobby, man. So, but Al South, yeah, so since I left there, they did institute um, a subscription system. But uh, you'll come to a page where you have to elect for, for your subscription your, or membership plan. And you just pick the one that says never a charge or something like that. Again, I haven't seen it. I, they've, all, they've done that since I, uh, since I stepped down. So what did I say? 51 miles was our TOD. We're at 81 miles now, so still got a little ways yet. I'm gonna do a little less hand flying this time. I'm gonna focus on trying to get the all of the steps on the checklist done this time. Uh, maybe hand fly the last thousand feet like I usually do in the, in the airliner. Um, but I'm gonna try and get you know get a more proper intercept and a more proper. Uh, um, procedural execution of the uh, of the approach on this on this one, because if you saw the first one, you saw the first approach, you saw really uh, really far behind the airplane, and I had a lot of excess altitude to lose, and I kept losing sight of the field, and uh, yeah, just it was just a mess. Um, the landing was great; I thought the landing itself was was fantastic, but the approach was terrible, one of my worst. Uh, Al South says, "Didn't know that. Thanks for the info. Signing up this week. Yep." Um, like I said, it's a it's a good program. They have a Discord. Or Delta Victor to send that pilot to discretion, maintain a one four thousand Green Bay altimeter two nine or seven. Two nine or seven nine or pilot discretion fourteen thousand five and four Delta Victor. All right, so let's go ahead and set this to one forty and two nine or seven nine or and two nine or seven nine or down here. Now it's uh, correcting to get back down to 17,000, but it hopefully should not start to, to set the 14 just yet. I'm watching you. There we go. Okay, good. <laughs> I 
Uh, so the over under. So when I set up the voice client, the standalone voice client for um, for the voice test, I didn't in, get a chance to uh, run the little bridge program that would map my joystick button, my push, my normal push to talk button, to the uh, push to talk key in the the voice system. So I've I've had to remember this entire night to to reach up and 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 hit uh, the control button on the keyboard to talk instead of my uh, my left joist my left trigger button on the yoke. Uh, the over under on how many times I was going to forget and key the uh, key the trigger on the yoke to talk instead of the uh, instead of the keyboard button was seven and a half. That was the over under. Uh, so far, I have done it, I believe, twice. If anyone's keeping score that was on since the beginning of the stream, I think the I think the number of occurrences on that is two right now. Maybe three. Might be three. I got that squeaky chair going again. I forget which one of y'all called me out on the squeaky chair thing. I have not yet oiled that joint, so I apologize for that. I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> and I got one of these cheap headsets. It just picks up everything. Um, so yeah, I'll try and uh, noise gate needs some adjusting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's all right? Now you guys are gonna bust my balls. Okay, here's what the noise is. It's the noise of my middle finger. <laughs> oh, come on. Right. This is what I said on the earlier stream when it came up. All it is, it's bringing you guys into the room to, to be part of the experience with me, right? How do you like the Carinata Citation model, says Sky Cowboy? And I love it. Full immersion, right? <laughs> says Cowboy, not exactly. <laughs> Sky Cowboy, uh, I love this plane. I think it's, I think it's gorgeous. Uh, it's, it, it flies, be hand flies beautifully. Uh, the FMC takes a little getting used to, and I believe from what I am told, uh, it's the default X-Plane FMC, so it's a little limited in its functionality. Um, but uh, but yeah, I love this plane. It's gorgeous. I mean, the model and the model, it's Carinata, so the, the the visual of it is going to be well done. That's just that's just their staple. But I think that it flies nicely as well. But yeah, I mean, visually, of course, it's just you know, it's it's typical Carinata. Look at the you know the wrinkle and the the, the slight stretching of the of the seat back pocket. Uh, the wrinkling in the leather. I mean, it's just very high detail done. And um, but as far as uh, operation, I think it works great. Uh, the FMC, like I said, is uh, is marginal, but it's it's just the, the default that comes with X-Plane. Uh, See, so top of descent 53. So we'll go ahead and start down now. Get my checklist in front of me. We'll take the engine power down to uh, 70. And uh, get the uh, now the autopilot's got done a little funny things on me a few times, but I can't. I, I'm still trying to figure out if it's uh, pilot error or uh, whoa vertical speed is what I want. Set that to about 1800. The center citation five and four dot the victor's leaving one seven thousand for one four thousand. Um, and we can uh, we can just kind of power for 250 on that. Uh, that's my deal slant. Critics call mine the squeakiest chair on Twitch. <laughs> we should maybe have a chair off at some point. Yeah, no, when the furry co-pilots run by and head for the back door, I want you all to hear that, so. Scott Cowboy says, I kept having problems with the Carinata King Air model, where the screen would black out, and then it finally dawned on me that the oxygen system is simulated. <laughs> yeah, I've got the uh, reality expansion pack for the um, default Beach Baron, and I was flying in uh, Denver a few streams ago, and uh, cruising at 17,000 for an extended period of time, and all of a sudden I kept hearing this repetitive crunching sound. I'm like, oh, is that the, uh, is that the... We're not to send that pilot discretion, maintain 2,600, expect the visual pressure at 6 degrees. Uh, pilot's discretion, 2,600, expect the visual for runway 6, uh, 5, 4, 2,600. 
Um, so yeah, this repetitive crunching sound, then I realized it was simulating the heavy breathing. Oh, it leveled me out of 14. All right, let's, uh, and vertical speed and get it back down to an 1800 foot descent. It, yeah, 1800 foot per minute descent. Oh, we'll make it 15 because we're going to start slowing it down as well. Um, so yeah, I was, I thought it was, thought it was the, uh, ice being knocked off of the wing by the, uh, by the anti-icing boots, and it, no, it turns out it was the heavy, uh, the heavy breathing of the pilot who was going into hypoxia. <laughs> Al South says, I just signed in at Vatstar, lo and behold, first video, oh yeah, so if you see that, yeah, I, I did tutorial videos for Zulu time, I did tutorial videos for setting up Discord, I did uh, tutorial videos for the first eight lessons in the P2 training. So you'll definitely hear my lovely voice through a lot of it. Um, after lesson eight, though, I I I, uh, I kind of ran out of time to do those videos. Um, but yeah, certainly my my voice, my my writing style, and my speaking style is uh, stamped all over that damn thing. So enjoy. Uh, it's almost like a slant alpha light. <laughs> Melvin <laughs> says he just choked on his ice cream a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, the hypoxia. I tell you what, if you watch the recent flight that I did uh, in Denver, it was so confusing. I actually I needed one of the Twitch viewers to help me figure out what the hell's going on because I I couldn't figure it out. I thought it was anti-icing uh, or something. It was a uh, it was a good time. <laughs> All right, so we're not really flying the ILS, but we might as well brief it like we were. 109.5 and 062, so let's get those set. Radio check. Five by five. Not a clear. Sweet, thanks. 109.5. Yeah, 109.5. Uh, course on that is uh, 062. In order to set the course, we've got to, f to uh, turn the heading bug around, flip it into heading mode real quick. I flip that into nav mode real quick, and now we can set the course of uh, 062. I don't know if that's the way the real plane behaves, but uh, again, it's default X-plane uh, autopilot system to some extent, so kind of have to just do what it takes to get the job done here. Uh, 062, okay. Uh, also, we're through 10,000, so I got a few things I need to do. Uh, we'll get it back into uh, GPS mode and nav mode. Get rid of that. Uh, through 10,000, now we can get the landing lights back on and recognition lights back on. Uh, what else do we want to look at on this approach is uh, the straight-in minimums, 200 feet above ground level. And that's already set, because that's what it was for the last approach. Uh, missed approach procedure, again, it's not, it's, we're doing a visual, so we're not really bound by the missed approach for the ILS. But just in case we can't catch sight of the runway, we can switch to the ILS. Uh, it's a straight climb to 1400, and then left turn to 2500 to Green Bay VOR. Matter of fact, uh, we should probably check and make sure that that's in the FMC properly. Yeah, so 1400 and then uh, Green Bay. Okay, good. Got the airport diagram. We're going to land on runway 6. That means it's going to be A. Uh, we'll go to the FBO on the east side. We've got a, another general aviation complex there in the middle of the field, but it looks like it's a pain in the ass to get to. So we'll go to the FBA, FBO up on the northeast side. That means it's going to be a left-hand turnoff and then taxi in the runway 6 direction along Delta to get up to the end of the, of the, uh, of the field there. Uh, let's continue. Uh, the winds were zero eight. Five and four Delta Victor turn right heading one three zero back to the final. One three zero five and four Delta Victor. All right, let's get uh, one three. Let's get it into uh, whoops into heading mode. Come on. Means we can change out over to nav, and 
we can zoom in on the uh, zoom in on the airport a little bit. Come on now. I can never find the click spot to change the range. There we go. And we want to definitely start pulling the power down. Uh, let's finish our, our uh, approach briefing here. Uh, forecast wind is going to be a slight right to left because it's a 080 for a 060 runway. Uh, there's no ceiling to speak of, so we're okay from there. And the VRF is going to be 96 with the approach speed being 101. So there's 96, and V approach will be 101. The power for about 210 knots here. <clears throat> Uh, Young Hoon uh, is asking about the clouds. Uh, I have uh, no. I have Active Sky X plane, and I have the uh, the high performance clouds, which means it's the lower quality clouds. Um, but I don't have the most high end system, so I've got uh, you know, pretty much every little cheat and tweak running that uh, that keeps the F FPS acceptable. Four five one four Delta Victor uh, Green Bay Airport eleven o'clock uh, one seven miles report in sight. Yeah, looking for the field five one four Delta Victor. Uh, I don't quite see it yet. Should be out there somewhere. Is that it? That looks suspiciously like a bunch of buildings. Yeah, I'd say that's probably it. I'm gonna call the field probably in sight yet. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll say we're still looking. We do want to show that descent out a little bit here. And then we want to start slowing it down to about 170. And then we'll get flap 7 going. I'd say that looks suspiciously like an airport. Sorry, 514 Delta Victor, we got the field in sight. 514 Delta Victor, clear visual approach on I 6. Clear the visual runway 6, 514 Delta Victor. Alright, so we want to. Uh, Speed up to about 140 now. Get ready to intercept. Uh, we got the autopilot on uh, nav mode. Let's double check this uh, 10950. Is that right? Yeah. I don't seem to have the uh, ILS indications. Okay, well, I guess we're going to have to hand fly it after all. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll cheat to some extent. We'll use the, uh, use the nav display. Are in there. No cheating with the M button. No, no. If you were really up in the air, you wouldn't have an M button. Come on now. <laughs> Besides, I have a joystick button aside of that. But no, 
uh, you use your eyeballs, and then as a backup, you use the nav display and the uh, the tuned approach. We're good now. We're turning about 140 knots. We're getting ready to intercept. And like I said, we are we are going to hand fly the last few uh, few little bit of it, but of this, but uh, just because I want to get it more procedurally correct than I did into Minneapolis, I'm going to just kind of let the airplane do some of the hard lifting, heavy lifting for me right now. Could pull out Sky Vector in real life. Yeah, of course. And if you watch my stream where I do all the radio navigation, you'll see. Um, you know, you'll see that generally speaking, I'm pretty good with uh, with keeping track of my position on charts and such. Up the uh, map display. Whoops, all the way. Yeah, we definitely got the field in sight now. There we go. A fairly steep turn, but again, it's a visual approach. It wasn't really an ILS, so. Uh, we will go ahead and get the uh, nav mode engaged. And glide slip's coming down, so we'll actually, um, yeah, I tell you what, let's actually just go ahead and hand fly. <laughs> Autopilot. Localizer and glide slope are both coming down. We want to go into our next knock flaps. Our 514 Delta Vic, you've crossed the final approach. Just uh, crush and course. Uh, just confirm. Oh, there you go. See you turning now. Thanks. Two mic clicks to acknowledge. <laughs> November 514 Delta Victor, wind 08010, nice 6, clear to land. Then I run my 6, 514 Delta Victor. All right, so, yeah, we made that turn a little late for sure, but. Uh, Coming back into it now. Go ahead and get the gear down. Now that we're on, uh, yeah, we're, we're descending on the final approach. So we'll get the gear down. Get down to that VRF of uh, 101. Going to correct slightly to the right. So 080 is the wind, but it's a uh, pretty light wind. Below glide slope down, we'll get the nose up, but we'll still let the speed coming down. Alright, now we're uh, stabilized, we get the last notch of flaps in. Power up to counteract the new drag. Glide slope is looking good, alignment's looking good. Flaps are set and checked. Gears green. We do have our landing clearance. VRF is supposed to be 101. So we'll bring it back down a little bit. Getting blown a little left to center line, so we'll correct that. We'll get back on it. As we get over the numbers, we'll get the uh, speed back down to uh, 96. Continuing to crash. B is a little on the low side now. Let's get it back up. Flat slope and uh, localizer look good though. Doing much better on this one than the last one. Uh oh, now I'm getting. <laughs> All of a sudden I'm below that wind. Alright. 
Another slice of butter bread, guys. What do you think? Left hand turn off. Coming up. Stow the flaps and spoilers. Cancel reversers. Make the next left turn off. Peanut butter with jelly. That's a little stickier than I like to be. I prefer butter, but we'll take it. Number 514 Delta Victor, welcome to Green Bay, except left, unable to say parking. Uh, left turn, and uh, let's see, we're off here at Delta 1, looks like, and we're going to the FBO over on the east side. Our 514 Delta Victor, Roger, uh, taxi to parking via Bravo and Alpha, and uh, let me know if you need to cross on a 36 if you need to go to that west ramp or at all. Okay, Bravo, Action. Delta. Yep, I'm sorry, we have Bravo, Delta. Yeah, we're going over to the uh, east side over where uh, Delta and Golf intersect. I see that. Number 5 and 4 Delta Victor side. That was completely backwards. Uh, taxi to parking via Delta Golf. Have a good one. Sorry about that. Uh, no, no problem, sir. What's uh, what's east and west between friends? 5 and 4 Delta Victor. <laughs> All right. Sky Cowboys is nice work. Thank you. Appreciate that. Let's uh, get the landing lights off. Uh, recognition lights can stay on. That's basically our taxi light. Uh, what else do I need to do? We'll get the, uh, let's see. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me get my taxi and checklist in front of me. Stow the reverse splash from spoilers. We did it. Landing lights off. We did it. Anti-collision light. That's the other one I was looking for down there. That's uh, that one. I know we want to get the uh, TCAS off. Uh, oh, the continuous ignition switches. I don't think I ever got them on. Oh, I did. There we go. Either that or I never turn them off after departure. I don't remember which. <laughs> uh, the TCAS can come off. That's over yonder. And I think that's it. Yeah, I think the more likely scenario is that I never turn the continuous ignition switches off after the departure because I think I also forgot to turn them back on during the uh, approach. <laughs> so it all comes out in the end, right? What is this? Is this golf? Yeah, I think it must be. Alright, cool deal. Well, the voice system, I think, was awesome. I know there's still some little errors here when you go to uh, some ghost aircraft coming in there. Um, <laughs> it's a haunted airfield, guys. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, so the voice system works great. I know there's a few little bugs when you go to switch frequencies or, uh, or open and close it, so I hope that the development team gets that under control. Um, but uh, I, I'm loving it. It sounds great. Hopefully we got some good demos of the... I know we earlier in this stream we heard some good demos of the blocking tone. So, uh, so yeah, that was pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and see uh, how we did. Let's get the aircraft shut down and see how we did with our fuel and time estimates here. Alright, so we can get the... Uh, we'll just park right here. Just block in this, uh, this Baron here. <laughs> All right, parking brake. Get the uh, recognition light off. Let's run through this. Uh, run through the shutdown as quickly as we can. Toe static. Uh, we get the throttle cut off. So see, I got to pull these clamps. Uh, I got to. Where's the Where's the click spot for that? There we go. And there. And pull that down. Okay, engines are engines are winding down, so we can turn the beacon light off as well. Passenger safety lights. Okay, y'all can. Get on out. Oh, never got it on. Oh, well. <laughs> now you can definitely get out. Uh, generators can be uh, shut off. One, two. And set the squawk back to 1,200. And then we'll uh, get the transponder shut off as well. 12. Moment of truth, guys. Let's hit, see how we did with the fuel and timing ETA. Or, uh, the fuel and timing estimates. That's always my biggest challenge. 
Uh, see, the ground power unit can come on. Uh, we'll open up the main door. We'll open up the uh, baggage doors. There you can see those there. And uh, let's see. For leg number two, I had said we would be in between 136 and 141 Zulu time. We are exactly at 142 Zulu time on the blocks right now. So one minute off. I think we'll take it. Uh, remaining fuel should have been 2358. So let's go weight and balance. 2362. I was again. Oh my God. Four pounds. Unbelievable. <laughs> Young Moon says, see you later, man. Yeah, so if, if, you, uh, if you guys are new to the stream um, and you want to know how I do these calculations for my, uh, my estimated times at the fuel, uh, there is a video on the YouTube channel that you can, uh, you can pull up. It's about a half-hour video, and it goes through the setting up of the, of the math calculations here in Excel uh, where you can put these calculations in and, uh, and get those time and, and fuel estimates. Um, yeah, right on the marks is Al South, South MIA, man. Yeah, I, I couldn't ask for any better. That was pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, now it's 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 fine tuned for the kind of short hop flying that I do, about an hour and a half, hour to hour and a half flying. I don't know that the math holds up over long hauls, but you can certainly put it in, and, and the, the the sheet the, the the tutorial goes through how you can uh, how you can put those numbers in, and then you can tweak them uh, to suit your own style. So yeah, that, that's on the YouTube channel um, if you uh, if you want to check that out. All right, let's finish the shutdown and get on out of here. What do you say? Gear anti-skid will come off. Uh, passenger safety lights back into the neutral position there. Wing lights were not used. Nav lights can come off. Get that out of the way. Uh, nav lights are over there. Uh, avionics switch can come off. That's up here somewhere, I think. Those two, yep, okay. Uh, panel lights were not used, and then the battery switch can come off. Uh, we can then turn the... Uh, Ground power back off. We'll close up the uh, close up the doors and put out the static elements. And viola, here we be at. What do you think? Welcome to Green Bay, guys. Go get yourself some uh, cheese and uh, yeah, go Packers and all that stuff. <laughs> and uh, really appreciate y'all hanging out with us tonight. We had a good time. And uh, a lot of new folks stopping by. Thank you, uh, Ground Point Niner, for uh, bringing some uh, new friends our way. We always appreciate that. And uh, uh, looking forward to hanging with the AJ once we get out to uh, once we get out to Orlando. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be your uh, I'll be the sidekick that you wish would go away after at least a couple hours. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, Mel Melvin Leroy says good night. Sky Cowboy says ace. Nice. Kiss my ace. Um, but uh, yeah. So thanks again, guys. So uh, just to let you know what's coming up on the stream. Um, we're scratching the flight for tomorrow. We're normally, okay, the normal normal uh, stream schedule is um, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Wednesday, we do the first and third of every week. Monday and Friday, we do every week. Um, and then Sunday mornings, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. But uh, we're scratching the flight for tomorrow. It is my birthday. My wife's taking me out to dinner. So uh, Nelvin Leroy has preemptively said happy birthday. So appreciate that. So the Friday, night, uh, Friday night's flight is off for this week. Um, as the uh, wife and I have been getting drunk on margaritas and enchiladas. Uh, we got a new, uh, some new follow action there. Sky Cowboy has hit the follow button. All right, awesome. Hope you'll, hope you'll stop back and Ground Point Niners says happy birthday as well. Thank you preemptively to uh, all the happy birthday wishes. And yeah, uh, AJ, we'll definitely see you in a week. Uh, Al South, appreciate that as well. All right, so, um, so yeah, no Friday night stream, but we are back on on Sunday morning. We're going to get back to what we've been doing, and if, especially if you're new to the stream, I'll show you this um, in the the Beach Baron with Reality Expansion Pack, we've set up this 48 leg, I'm sorry, 47 leg tour of the uh, 48 contiguous United States. We started in Augusta, Maine, and uh, we've flown down the East Coast, and we're kind of down the bottom end of the, uh, of the of that Eastern leg there. Um, let's see, we've got, how many of these have we got in the books? Let me get it in front of me. Uh, we are going to be, we've done 15 of these things. We are currently in Tallahassee, Florida. We're going to be resuming on Sunday morning on the 8 a.m. stream, uh, which is 1200 Zulu time. And we'll be going from, uh, from Tallahassee, Florida. We are going on to Montgomery, Alabama, and then Chattanooga, Tennessee. So if you see at the very bottom right where the, uh, the route hits the, uh, basically hits the, the Discord logo there, we're then uh, going back up to the north and then up and towards the uh, Midwest. So uh, that'll be legs 15, I'm sorry, 16 and 17 
from uh, Tallahassee, Florida, Montgomery, Alabama, then Chattanooga, Tennessee. So that's Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Time um, if you want to join us on the next one. In the meantime, if you want to catch any of our old flights, you can always hop on the YouTube channel plus my tutorial about... Uh, the time and fuel estimates is up there. That's uh, just basically if you punch in Slant Alpha Adventures with the spaces, that'll pop right up. I'm looking for 100 subscribers so I can get that custom link done. Um, for right now, about two-thirds to that goal. So if you want to hop on there and hit the subscribe button, that'll help me out. I appreciate it. But in the meantime, just use the, just type it. I mean, just, you know, don't be lazy. Just type it. <laughs> I promise you I'm the only YouTuber using those three words in their name. So I shouldn't, uh, shouldn't present any difficulty to pull that up. If you want to catch, uh, catch up with us and see what we're up to, you can uh, find us on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, username on both of those is Slant Alpha with no space. And then the Discord uh, invite link is down there in the lower right-hand corner. If you go discord.gg and then uh, type that little jumble there, that'll get you right into our Discord server. And again, it's a good way to just kind of chat with us and see what's up. Uh, the show schedule is posted on uh, the Twitch channel information, uh, and it's also on the Facebook page and, and on the Discord server as well. So... Uh, so feel free to touch base with us via any of those methods. And uh, in the meantime, then, we will see you Sunday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Thank you again for all the new viewers, new followers, and all the wonderful birthday wishes. Thanks, guys. Uh, in the meantime, between now and Sunday, please be safe in your own travels and your own adventures, and we will talk to you soon. <laughs>